the um, Ararat captain coach Toddy and also Peter Light uh, from Horsham. Ararat have won the toss this and they're going to kick to the, the what are we call the eastern end, end of the ground. Eastern and the western end of the ground. Ararat won the toss. Toddy's kicking to the eastern end. Perhaps you could pick up the two guys that are going on the bench. Uh, Huey for us. Two players for Horsham are Robert Wood and uh, Stuart Kroom and the 19th and 20th of the uh, uh, we haven't seen the him yet. Uh, David, yeah, David Hoskin. As you notice, it's both the uh, a horse player and Robert Woods got ba heavily bandaged knee so and also lead. David Hoskin. Please. I think they're both a little bit suspect, so both sides have taken a little bit of a risk there. But the, the other not, the other player who's on the bench for our rat... I Darren Bale, I think it is you. Is it Darren Bale? Yeah, number 13. I think it was Darren Bale. OK, just about in readiness. Uh, interesting down here in front of us, uh, a group of the uh, Ararat players, they're talking things we're over, it's their back line. Uh, they're having a good uh, group discussion, which is pretty interesting. They're obviously working themselves out. Um, it's going to be a real battle. What do you see as perhaps the, uh, the two or three key battles? Huey? Well, of course, the key battle will be uh, Chris Dalton, centre forward for uh, Ararat. He's been picked up by Graham Moyle. It's important that uh, Moyle gets on top of Chris Dalton because he brings a lot of the Arrow players into the game with his beautiful handball. Two ex Collingwood players. Well, that's true, but I think you know, Chris Dalton's got a lot of uh, advantage with youth on his side. And up the other end of the ground, we've also got centre half forward Johnny O'Kelling, who did a great job last week. He's been picked up by Brett Dalton. I think if Horsham are going to win this game, they've got to get away to a good start. And the players at the centre bounce in uh, St uh, Stephen Hobbs, Peter Light, and Peter Hickmont, and of course, their uh, veteran rover, Peter Wood. If these fellas can get off to a good start, Horsham could be on fire. OK, let's uh, get it underway. Umpire Paul Saville about to uh, bounce the ball in the centre of the ground. We better take some time, keep an idea on things. It's uh, Hobbs against uh, Cole Thompson. Big Cole Thompson in there, number 32, Michael Hosking. He's in there talking to his ruckman, patting him on the tail. And all's in readiness. A big job for Cal Duncan, too, against Toddy at full forward. First bounce of this 1986 grand final. Down it goes. A beautiful bounce to start the game. Hobbs gets the tap down from the centre of the ground. Robbie Wood's in there. Hank but uh, Hank Owen, he's back from suspension. Puts a beautiful handball out here in front David of Jennings. the uh, David Jennings. He's tackled. Hasn't got the ball. Play on, says the umpire for mine. The ball okay. goes to ground. Plenty of uh, tackling in there. And a free kick against the... Uh, a horseshoe player, and that's Cunningham with the ball. He goes across the ground, playing on fairly quickly across to Stewie McGuinness. Stewie McGuinness onto his right foot, puts it right down towards Todd and Duncan. They're wrestling in the square. Todd in front, taps it over the back. Moyle punches the ball away. He goes long out there towards Mark Jason Merlo, but Mark Graves is first to the ball. Pretty good player, this fellow. He puts it onto his left foot and goes around that halfback flank, and the ball goes out of bounds in front of uh, Phil Creek, the Horsham player, in there against his Ararat opponent. So right into it for a start. Ararat into attack. Thompson and Hobbs. Uh, in the ruck there, we find that uh, it's number 25, Bruce Fallon going against Hobbs. Ball comes down to the ground. Plenty of scrambly play in there. Players battling away with each other. Jason Merlo on the bottom of the pack for Horsham and uh, the umpire will ball it up once again. Greg Kerr's also in there. He looks like he's going to go for this one. No, it's not. Uh, yes, it's Kerr against Thompson. They're in there battling away. Uh, Hobbs gets the knock down to the ground again. Michael's a scoring. good tackle by against Walling by a Horsham player there. That's number 24 for Horsham and that's uh, Mark Graves. He's worked hard early in the game. Scrambly play over there on the wing. The ball comes out of the pack uh, into Horsham's court area, but the mark's taken by Cole Thompson on the halfback flank. He's looking for a player up the short, up the short of the ground, and Brucey Bellins leads out. Plays on quickly, gets the handball across Stewie to number 30, and that's Stewie McGuinness. It bounced badly for him, but he got the ball kicked on the ground. Rob Dumas, leads in the race to the ball, but Murray McGuinness in there fighting. Also a Horsham player, young David Bone on the wing, across uh, to uh, Graves there. He puts it over the top, bounces awkwardly for Thompson. Out it comes here for John O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan hooks it around. Wallman's in front of his opponent. A good punch from behind by Cox. He recovers quickly, puts it onto his left foot, drives the ball around towards the wing, and it's all out of Young Hoskin picks up the ball well, goes across the centre, finds the handball out there to number 46. Hank Owen, it's a big kick down towards Toddy. Todd and Duncan battling in. Duncan in front, prepared to punch by the looks of me. He's prepared to push it out. Kerr looking for a player. Handball's across to Hank Owen again. He lines it up. He'll score the first ball for the game, and he put it right through. Old, has it made the difference? No, it hasn't quite. But it was going through, but Horsham relieved deep in defence out here towards this wing and David Bone. He's got two to one on him. Number 11 there for uh, Ararat, that's uh, David Jennings. He played well. Gets it onto his left foot, snaps in towards... And that'll be the first score of the game. One point, and Ararat have got it underway. OK, that's the first score of the 1986 Grand Final. A point to Ararat. They, uh, they go ahead with a point lead. And uh, down there, the full-back, Duncan Cal Duncan. Cal Duncan for Horsham, about to put the ball back into play. Hobbs and Thompson. Hobbs makes a lead there across that half-back line for Horsham. Beautiful. It's a nice... Drop punt kick from two fly, punched away from, from Thompson there. The ball on the ground, a number of players in battling for it. And it's eventually Michael brought Spalding's out by Michael Spalding. He's got a short low pass looking for Todd down there at full. Picks the ball up across. Alistair Williamson goes into goal. Williamson. 
has a shot for goal, offline and another point. That's two points to the Ararat side here and play. How long will we play it here in this first We've been term. going three minutes in the first term. Three minutes in the first term. at this stage, term. isn't it? Looks like Graham Moore is going to kick out from fullback. This is a surprising move and they haven't got much to kick to up in up the middle of the ground. You watch this for a kick here, it'll be a well, beauty. Podge for it to Duncan down the ground, Huey. A nice kick by Moyle there for the big fellows. Thompson in front, Hobbs from behind. He pushes the ball out towards Peter Light. Light controls the ball with the torpedo kick towards the half forward line. Bouncing in front of Steve Wallman. He's pushed over the line by that Ararat defender. Greg Cox, and the Ararat defender. Greg Cox. Had a top ear this bloke. Greg Cox in the back pocket. Steve Wallman in the ruck against Cole Thompson. Out of bounds on the half forward line. Wallerman and Thompson to do battle. Thompson gets the push out towards Andrew Mapleson. Mapleson, a little bit of a nudge in the bank. The umpire says play on. The ball hand passed out there and over towards Brett Dalton who breaks clear now. A nice drop punt looking towards Bruce the centre half forward position. Bruce Valance in, in possession of the ball at the moment. Picked Chris up Dalton. by Chris Dalton. He cleverly works the back with a left foot pass into the forward line. Todd Ooh, top. flies high. The umpire calls play on. And it's brought out of that back line. I think Craig Kemp. Craig Kemp down there. David Picked Bone's up by got the David Bone with a handball. Um, that Horsham player is uh, Dumsney, I think, getting the handball out again to... Alistair Yogi Williamson. Kemp. Now Ararat with the ball in possession. Hobbs comes in, pushes the ball in front of him. Picked up by Owen. Owen turns under the left boot. The kicker, oh, a hurried one. And goes down towards Michael Hosking. Hosking on the boundary line. Cleverly keeps the ball in play. But Horsham again go forward through Peter Hickmont. And the master Hickmont's kick comes back and taken by number 11. David Ararat Jennings has got it. David Jennings. This bloke played for interleague football this year for the Wimmer League. He's a natural left footer. Drives it long down the goal square. Chris Dopman's got the ride. Over the top, there's Bruce Bellin's got the ball. Gary Todd's got his hands on it, hooks it with his right foot, and it bounces through for one point. Paul Horsham at the moment here, isn't well, it? No, no, I think it's I all our rat. Yes, our rat have kicked three points, and uh, could have had opportunities for a couple of goals then. Cal Duncan very determined, uh, Huey, that uh, Toddy's not going to get his 100 today. No, that's right. Toddy, I think he's only got four goals. 96, to get. Yeah. He's on 96, so he's got four to get his 100. It would be a great effort to get your 100 goals in a grand final like this. Cal Duncan's looking for someone to kick to. He's looking for Stephen Hobbs. Hobbs is using his strength. Uh, Greg Kerr's got the ball, handballs it out to Mott, mixed bowling. He's got a ton of pace and drives it low down to Gary Todd. Beautiful pass, magnificent pass. And Todd let out well, but you couldn't beat that. I don't think Kel Murphy could do anything there. Well, this will be number one here. We'll back this one in. Yes, Gary Todd doesn't need many shots for goal to kick him. He's, he's ma making sure he's got his bootlaces done up there. I don't know if this is a bit of being cagey or what, but the umpires call time out. Or time on, as they say in uh, football. Horsham haven't had it over their half forward line at this stage, Pete. They're uh, battling a little bit, aren't they? They are. They'll uh, at half forward line. As a matter of fact, it happened in the first, second semi final. The same thing. Uh, they got it down to there. As Todd kicks this one towards goal, the umpire yep. doesn't move. That's straight through the centre. A good start for the Ararat Club in the 1986 grand final. Todd putting that one a nice drop punt straight through the centre. They Wasn't it a magnificent pass there from Mick's bowling? He's got a ton of pace and. The two or three kicks he's had so far in this game, he's kept them low to the ground. It gives you forwards a lot of confidence leading out to a player who can deliver the ball down the ground like that. And that'll, that'll give Todd a lot of confidence, getting one on the board early too. Certainly will be. David Jennings has been a very damaging player for Ararat at this stage. Yeah, David Jennings has been a very underrated footballer. He's included in Italy's squad this year. And the bounce of the ball here, we have Cole Thompson against Stephen Hobbs. Thompson's got his strength, but no. Looks like uh, Johnny O'Callaghan's got it. He goes under his right foot. Big kick down. Uh, Neil Valance is in front. Oh, he dropped this foot. He should have taken there. And hit out by Greg West across to Peter Wallerman. He's looking for a handball across to Peter Light. Peter Light will have a shot from here. And it's gone down. Brian Klein, the goal umpire, has gone across. And uh, it's one point. Yeah, First score to Horsham. Just proves how important it is to get out of the centre, doesn't it? Very important. Johnny O'Callaghan's done reasonably well so far at 10 hour forward, but hasn't done enough for the ball when he's got it. Uh, Neil Valance goes for a big kick, looking for Greg Kerr, leading across the area, taps it out. Two arrow in place, fighting for ball. Johnny O'Kelling is over the top. Handball out. Peter Light's got it again. Usually does something with the ball. Look, looking for Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith held there, and he's got the first free kick for Horsham tonight. Stephen Smith is one fella that there's who's got to kick goals for Horsham, I believe, and to have a chance. And uh, he's coming, he's been playing the second semi final, and he could be the damaging player that Horsham need up in their forward line. Grant Kemp, uh, the couple of times that the ball has come down there, he's tended to be behind his opponent. Uh, he'll have to get in front, won't he? Yeah, he's got to play from in front to have any chance. And he's Stephen Smith one, missed that one. That was a bad miss. Can't afford to have that. So the scoreboard reads at this stage, Ararat one goal three for Horsham two points. Greg Cox is about to kick out. He's usually a normally a good kick, a left foot kick again. Gone big down there. Brett Dyke in front. Johnny O'Callaghan flies. 
It's down on the bottom of the pack is Andrew Mapleson. Oh, he got hit hard. Fairly though, Brett Dolphin. Beautiful. Well, he's mixed bowling, got a lot of pace. No, he hasn't got the ball. All over the top of that fella. Who's that? Uh, Peter Light's got it again. This will be about his fourth position. And Stu McGinnis didn't even go for the ball there, but he's done well. Over the top of David Bone. The Horsham fellas are trying to get it out. There's not much talk. Johnny O'Kelly has got it again. Here's David Jennings, that player you talked about, gone down the ground. Oh, he's got and dropped one. It looks like he's been picked up by Jason Merlo. He's looked for a good pass. It's hot again. And Todd, no, he's well done, Kelda. Tremendous effort. He's tapped out the back. Here's Jason Merlo going through hard. Gary Todd's got his hands on the ball, being pecked by Mark Rose. The umpire's going to ball it up on the fourth pocket. Just around from the scoreboard in Ararat's attacking zone. Certainly looking for Todd down in that forward line. Up go the Ruckman. It's uh, an Ararat player. He's got it down to number seven, of course. Jason Merlo gets it onto his left foot. It's a scrappy old kick. Play on, says the umpire. They're all battling away deep in that forward line, and the ball will go uh, out of uh, bounds in front of the dynamic demon sign over there. And plenty of pressure on the Horsham back line at this stage. Obviously, the uh, two key players that Ararat are going through are Chris Dolkin and Toddy. In comes the ball. It's nullified and down, uh, and uh, another throw in from that boundary umpire over there, uh, halfway between the scoreboard and the timekeeper's box. Puts it back in again. Number 24 for Horsham. That's Mark Graves. He's in there battling away. Puts the ball down to the ground to a Horsham Stephen Rover. Smith. Playing on quickly. Stephen Smith has gone well down the ground. But he's been tackled and under a little bit of pressure. He's put the ball onto his left foot and uh, over the boundary and out of bounds. And the result is free kick to the uh, Ararat wingman, Tony Birrell. He'll look down there, they're looking towards Toddy all the time. Toddy is getting an underneath, a beautiful kick. Moyle is underneath, he's got the sit and should take the grab. And that's, that's exactly what he does. He'll look to play on quickly and get a running player. Brings the ball across to this side of the ground. He's looking out there for big Hobbsy. Hobbsy's got the room out in front, but David Bones make better position. There goes Jennings, he punches the ball away again, but it's all Horsham. Plenty of Horsham players, big Hobbsy showing pace. He picks it up like a rover, paddles it out in front of him. Good play on there by Jennings, and uh, for mine it almost went off his boot on the full then. But the boundary umpire says uh, throw it in, and certainly a big job out here for number six, David Bone of Horsham Jennings, uh, certainly on top of him at this early stage. The umpire throws it in, Hobbs and Thompson. Hobbs gets in front, pats it over, beautifully to light. Light a handball across there to number Peter nine, Hickmott. which is Peter Hickmott, his first touch for the game. Down it comes down the ground, but there's Dolkin. He puts it onto his left boot, going up the ground, and it's a good Horsham player. Looks like uh, Hickmott again. Oh, he's played on badly. He's kicked it into the mound on his mark, picked up by uh, Chris Dolkin. He screwed it around, put it right into the 10-yard square, and it's, uh, it's a, almost an arrow at mark there to Gary Todd, but Moyle, Moyle in front of the pack. He's leading out in the race for the ball. Bad play there by Hickmott. Must have been called to play on. I couldn't it see why. Uh, I thought it was a clear player. mark for mine, but he was under a lot of pressure. And Chris Dolkin, as you called him before, Mr. Magic, put the ball on and uh, got it down quickly. Ball's deep in that forward pocket, thrown in there. Horsham player taps it over the back, which is a little bit Stephen courageous Smith. deep in there. Stephen Smith tackled well and dropping the ball, says the umpire. I didn't think that was a very good bit of ruck work with there. The Horsham player deep in defence, palmed the ball back into the open area, and uh, it's going to cost him a goal, Huey. Well, I, Mark Rose has been uh, very predictable in his ruck work throughout the year. He always hits from right across to his left shoulder and he's done it again in front of goal and as you say, it could cost him a goal here. Alistair Williamson, what he'd be about 20 or 30 yards out, 20 or 30 metres out from goal. About halfway in the 50 metre uh, circle there, Huey. Lines it up, runs in fairly quickly and it looks all right to me off the bit. Beautiful shot, straight through the middle, number 24 and uh, that's a good goal. Uh, I suppose we're being a little bit hard on Graves there, but he's really opened the angle up and he comes back over the top, doesn't he? How far into the quarter, Peter? Coming up to the 12 minute mark of the first quarter, Mike, and Ararat doing it well at the moment. Okay, any uh, danger players at this stage, Huey, that have got to be really worked out quickly? Well, James, as you said, has been doing very well. Michael Spalding has been winning across the centre, and this is vital in Grand Finals to win across the centre. Would you swap your Horsham wingers at this stage? Well, I don't think they've got anything to lose. I can't, they, Ararat can't afford to get too far in front, otherwise Horsham will Right, win. right, Graves back on top in the centre. He puts it down. Hickmott putting himself back into the game. Screws it over his shoulder. Looking there for Wixie. Well rowed by John O'Callaghan coming through. He handballs across to Bone. He'll put it right to, into attack. And it's uh, the Ararat players in front there again. Balance. Hits it down to Kemp. Kemp for Horsham's battling in there. There goes Greg Woody. Wicks. Across to Greg Wicks. He'll have a look. He's a good strong player. Takes plenty of time. Screws it round. And it's going to be touch and go. Out of bounds on the full, says the goal umpire. And that'll be a result of free kick to uh, Neil Balance, the fullback from the Ararat club. He comes in, puts it onto his right boot. Down the ground looking there for Dolkin. He's got the ride. But uh, good play by O'Callaghan. He brushes his opponent aside, gets it onto his boot, but the umpire says uh, out of bounds. He said he'd run out of bounds on this half forward flank, and the ball will be thrown in. Horsham certainly putting a little bit more pressure on the Ararat players now. They seem to be getting the ball a little bit better out of that, uh, that centre. The umpire throws it in. It's Thompson and Wallam, and they'll go for the knock. Hank Owen at the back of the pack calling. Thompson gets the paddle. Nowhere in particular. John O'Callaghan's on the ball. Very quickly broken up by the umpire, and he comes in. That's umpire uh, Saville. He'll come in and he'll ball it up uh, on this half-forward flank for Horsham. 
Wallerman doing the ruck work in the forward line, down it goes. He's got in front of Thompson, rucks well, but Thompson still gets it down. He gets it down to the rover, Hosking, onto his left foot, down towards the uh, half forward line, and McGuinness in front. He's quickly tackled, but a beautiful handball over the top to the running player, Owen, backing up his Dolphin. Dolphin across to Michael Hosking, and away he goes. He sprints down the ground, two bounces he's had. He'll have another one. No, he's going to kick. He looks over the top, and he's found an arrow player, but good pressure by number four from Horsham. That's Craig Kemp, and Moyle once again comes out with the ball. This time, he's driven it too far, and it's over the bound, and uh, out of bounds. On the ball, and the free kick is going to Murray McGuinness from Ararat. My word, gee, that was terrific play by Ararat. The ball comes back from the half forward flank right into the goals. See if Bruce Valance flies, can't take the mark. The ball comes out. Greg Kerr falls over the top of the ball. The Horsham player on top of him, which was Jason Lillo. The umpire says that's mine, fellas. Whole bounce at about 25 metres out from the Ararat goal. Ararat leading at the moment, but where goes the ball? Bruce Valance taps the ball out. Kicked along there by the Horsham player, which was Kemp comes back towards Jason Merlo. Jason Merlo with left foot down towards the centre line. We've got uh, Mark Graves and Cole Thompson out there. Thompson paddles the ball back in. Graves again paddling the ball in front of him. Comes through. Mabelson picks the ball up with a yeah. nice pass wow. there. And it's taken by O'Kelligan in the centre of the ground. O'Kelligan now with a drop punt looking for the push and forwards. But in front, they're taking the mark on the chest. Was that Ararat Rat defender? And it's Craig Summers. Summers kicks well as he played on there. Picked up by Jennings. Jennings trying to get control of the ball. He loses Horsham it. Horsham free kick. The umpire's found a free kick. And that goes to Horsham's David number Bone. six, which is David Bone. Bone now putting Horsham forward. The umpire said, you've gone over the mark. For the Ararat player at a 15 metre penalty. It's a fair 15 metre penalty. That brings, brings Bone to... Uh, it's in a half forward position, about 45 degrees. Oh. Too far out here, I think. Yeah, far too here. Far. Looking for the uh, Stephen Wallman down there at full forward. Wallman flies, I think yeah, he's got mark. it. Good mark, good Yes, grab. the umpire says, yes, Steve Wallman, you can have that one. And he's marked about 20 we're metres out front. directly in front. Peter, and when they uh, play in front, they uh, they look so much better in that forward line. They do, and gee whiz, Horsham really need this goal. They're trailing at the moment. Two points to two goals, three, 15 Ararat. At the 15 minute mark of the first term, Wallman. You'd kick this one, Peter, wouldn't you? Oh, I, th well, I don't know. I'd be trying. <laughs> well, I mean, moves in, hit over the ball. The umpire moves well, to his he left, and I think he's missed it. Oh, he has. Goodness. That's one point. A costly miss for Horsham in this first term of the grand final here at Anzac Park in Warwick and Beale. Ball. Brett Dalton waiting for the ball now to come back to him so he can put it back into play. Look, I believe that Brett Tolkien might have gone into full back because it looks like Johnny O'Callaghan was getting on top of him there. The Here ball. we have uh, Craig Summers who's got the ball. Well, Andrew May was a very fierce tackle of the ball. He's uh, held up play there and the umpire's going to bounce the ball on Horsham's half-forward flank. Dalkin and Valance changing back over Huey. Valance has just come down the ground and Dalkin covered him pretty well there. Cole Thompson uses his strength here. No, Brett Dalton's gone for the big punch. Drove down in front of Peter Hickmont and Hank Owen. Hank Owen's a little bit more pace. He's driving along the ground. Great stuff by Hank Owen. He hasn't got hold of the position yet. He's hit along. Bruce Valance across to Hank Owen again. The handball's been very constructive. And it's a big kick. kick by Hank Beautiful. Owen. Beautiful kick. And it's gone Hank right through the middle. Hank Owen, who missed out in the second semi final because of suspension. Great bit of handball by Bruce Valance. And he's driven it, I'd say, nearly 70 metres for goal. Started at the half-back flank, he's paddled it in front, hasn't been able to kick it, uh, pick it up. He's got past the player, he's hit it along the ground again, finally picked it up and uh, got the handball back and a beautiful kick, as you said. See, that's what you like to see, Huey, isn't it? They're real like team the goals, and as you said, Peter, they win premierships, those type of goals. Paul Savile's about to bounce the ball in the centre after that magnificent kick for goal. Cole Thompson against Mark Race, two strong, experienced players. Thompson's got the big punch straight down to Chris Dolphin. Oh, beautiful tap onto Michael Hosking. He'll do something with the ball. Looking for Gary Todd. Total Duckers wearing him like a blanket. There's a chance. Straight across to Murray McGuinness, number 15. He's ball weaved. He's got a handball out to Greg Kerr. He's raw. Beautiful. He's hooked it across for another goal. The, yeah, con good. the constructive handball of Arrow at this stage is doing a lot of damage. It was a magnificent handball on Murray McGuinness across to Greg Kerr. Here we are. I notice here, uh, and also Pete, that uh, Graham Moyle is giving Chris Dolkin far too much latitude. Uh, Moyle is getting kicked himself deep in defence, but uh, he's not playing uh, Dolkin very close there at all at 10.5 back. And well, I think he's got to tighten up. He's got to tighten up. I think he's got to play from in front. If Chris Dolkin gets in front, look, look they've made the move already. Johnny O'Callaghan, who was doing reasonably well at 10.5 foot, but he's gone to centre half back, and Graham Moyle's gone to centre half forward. I want to be critical of him, but he was playing in 20 and 30 yards and backing himself, and you can't do that against Dolkin, can you? Tom Thompson's got the hit again across to Andrew Mapleson, who drives it long down the forward line. Horsham are playing from behind. Oh, beautiful mark there. Oh, I didn't play. He hit it out in front of Graham Moyle. He drives in harsh. Tony Bill went over the top of him across to Andrew Mapleson. 
drives it long in front. Fever Wallen has got the city out. Yes. About 20 or 30, uh, 20 feet out from the boundary line. Well, he's a natural left footer here, so he's on the wrong side. He missed that last one you? Yeah, he just likes to kick this one. Wallen are now in the, uh, the forward pocket for Horsham. Moves in onto his left foot. The umpire looks he's like this one's pretty too. good. He's kicked this one. He's That's missed a goal. it from dead in front, and he's kicked that one from almost on the boundary line. How do you pick him, Pete? Horsham's first goal for the, uh, the 1986 grand final. They go to one goal, three, nine points to Ararat. Very impressive at this stage of the grand final. Four goals, three, 27. And uh, he, that's what Horsham needed, wasn't it? They really did need that. And you can see the work around the centre. Andrew Maples is starting to get into the game. And Mark Ray is doing a lot more damage in the ruck, uh, taking over from uh, Stephen Hobbs. And Beaver Wallerman doing the damage up in front of goal. Greg Cox has given him a little bit of latitude. Paul Savills about the bounce of, or Shane McDonald, sorry, about the bounce of ball against Cole Thompson and Mark Rose again. Thompson's got the hit out again, and three or four is Peter Wood. Usually does something with the ball. Greg, Greg Wicks, oh, he nearly got there. Greg Cox is in front. Oh, there's three or four horse and blows. Oh, yes. It's a free kick against Andrew Mabelson. Mabelson Greg hit him Cox fairly is... hard then, you, didn't he? Yeah, it was a little bit hard. I think it was uh, one of those... It hasn't moved, fellas. hasn't moved. Mabelson came over and did collect him around the head region. And it's Mike Turn City. He uh, has he not moved. moved. The kick's gone to Dalkin and uh, play on, says the umpire. Bring it away from the player a little bit. I don't really think that it was uh, it wasn't anything a deliberate intentional one, I don't think It was Mike, a good, but... hard bump. And uh, he could be in a fair bit of trouble by the looks of things. Dalkin takes the kick. He goes long down towards the ground. He's looking for Greg Kerr. And in front, he takes a good long mark. He'll look to play on quickly. Round he goes. Down towards Toddy and Duncan. This is a real good battle, these two. Duncan in front. Punches the ball Jason away Miller. again. He's prepared to do that. Jason Merlin. He gets a push in the back. But play on, says the umpire. Pay the advantage. And David Bone in front this time with number 34. Greg Kerr takes the, the uh, mark on the halfback flank for Horsham. He comes around there. He's looking for a uh, nine feet of hit He's pushed out of the road by Duncan. Should be a free kick for mine. He's just pushed him out of the road. It will pay the uh, mark, says the umpire, and the 15 yarder against Andrew Maples from there, and the kick will go to Thompson. Thompson goes down into that uh, forward line, curves on his own, he's got the sit, can't take the mark, down it goes quickly to the ground. Horsham playing quickly, Kel Duncan out in front, and he paddles the ball out in Greg front of him. still on the ground, Well, they're caught for a stretch of Peter, and he hasn't moved. moved, he's in a fair bit of trouble, I uh, don't know what the problem is there, but uh, Ararat haven't covered up at this stage, which is... Uh, Fairly poor work from their bench, if I may be critical. They haven't got a defender down in deep in defence, and Wallerman's Here's on his own. Mike down the in ball's the back pocket. into play. Hit in the forward pocket there. Horsham player in front. Put it down to the ground, but quickly snapped up by Bruce. Another one. And they don't need him in the back line. He's popped it through for another goal to our at, and they go further ahead. Five goals, three to uh, Horsham, one goal, three, and they're doing it pretty easily here. Yeah, they seem to be doing it very easy. At this stage, they've had five goal kicks, and we've had... Uh, yep. Balance, uh, Gary Todd's kick one, Williamson kick one, Greg Kerr's kick one, and Hank Owens kick one. The call for an ambulance, and I think at this stage the umpires normally hold up play while there's an, uh, I mean, not an ambulance, a stretch has been called onto the ground. I don't know, he's, he's sitting up now, young um, Greg Cox. Is. Greg Cox, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a three or four trainers out. I don't know if they're going to call time on. Be interesting to see what happens here, whether they take him off with the stretcher or whether they're going to take him off through the interchange bench. He doesn't look real flash, does he? No, and to be fair, Hugh, uh, as Mike Toon said, it uh, wasn't a deliberate uh, blow, was it? It was sort of in the pack, in the general play, and unfortunately but for Cox... They've brought on an interchange player, number 13, in Darren Bale. Uh, he's played a fair bit in the back pocket throughout the season, Hughie, so he'll be no stranger to this, will he? He's gone into the back pocket to pick up uh, Stephen Smith. And number 23, Summers has come across to He's picked up Wallen. Wallen has been causing a bit of worry down there for him, so it'll be interesting to see if Summers can stem the tide through Stephen Wallen. Up we go, Stephen Hobbs against Cole Thompson. No one, Greg Kerr again drives it down. Murray McGinnis used his body for protection there. Lovely handball across to Chris Dalton. Now he's put him under pressure. Jason Merlo tried really hard. Been tripped there. And a professional free kick by Noel Collingwood footballer there. And, uh, Merlo's gone along down to Andrew Maperson. He's been a very consistent performer for Horsham. He drives it down and looking for Moyle. No, he missed it all together. Greg Dalton plays on. He's looking for Hank Owen. No, it's gone to Rod Dummacy. Rod Dummacy's used a long handball across to Stephen. Holmes who used his pace well. A big kick long down the ground to Stephen Smith. And there's Grant Kip leading to the run of the ball. I think it's going to go over the boundary line. Oh, no, he's got it in. Well done by Grant Kip. That's the first touch of the ball he's had. Oh, nearly around the neck. And the score play on it. Looks like it's going out of bounds in Horsham's forward pocket. Out of bounds in Horsham's forward pocket. 33 plays 19 with Ararat in front at the moment. The boundary umpire throws the ball in. Big Thompson there. He palms the ball down to his rover. 
and he kicks the ball towards the wing position. Big Stephen Hobbs there holds firm and takes a mark. He quickly plays on and kicks a nice drop front kick into the, uh, the forward line. And a pack Peter of players there. Peter Hickmock takes the ball off the pack with a left foot snap. It's a high kick. And the number of Ararat players high kick, but I think the ball's oh. off the hand of the pack there. And it's gone through for one point. That brings Horsham on to one goal, four, ten points. Ararat, five goals, three, thirty-three. It's interesting and to see we've got league umpires. At this stage, we've been playing nearly 19 minutes and we've had three free kicks apiece. And let the game play these VFL umpires. He's paid a mark there. No, it's gone out of bounds. OK, the ball again out of bounds in Horsham's forward pocket. We've got Hobbs doing battle there. Hobbs gets the tap out towards Kemp. Kemp leaving the ball through, and he through comes that Ararat defender, and that was Tony Birrell, the kick smothered, and the ball over the line for a boundary throw -in. Greg Cox not looking too bad. I think he's got a bit of concussion, Peter, and they've taken him into the rooms. Well, that's certainly good news. Here we are again. Thompson doing battle with Hobbs. The ball comes to ground. Desperate stuff there by the Ararat defender. Mabelson picks the ball up off the ground. It's across the face of the goals, and I think the umpire says, yes, he does. Out of bounds on the full, right against the point post. The Scots through end over here at Anzac Park. Craig Summers it is taking the kick deep in defence he comes over the top he's kicked into Wallerman actually he hasn't uh, put under a fair bit of pressure there and Wallerman will nearly get a free kick out of this play on says the umpire well backed up there by uh, Valence uh, deep in defence and these Ararat fellas certainly work hard uh, Williamson it was that came across there they certainly work hard these fellas uh, in defence for Ararat the umpire throws the ball in Moyle in ruck there against Thompson Dolkin comes over the back he puts the ball down to the front of the pack and it's scrambly play they're all players in having a battle I'm able to fix it up he's tackled hard by uh, a couple of Ararat players put under a lot of pressure and the ball's paddled over the uh, boundary and out of uh, out of bounds halfway between the half forward flank and the forward pocket in this uh, attacking zone in the city side of the ground for the Horsham Footy Club. Rucks are in there, Moyle is doing the ruck in the forward work, he's coming over the back, puts the ball to the ground, could have been an Ararat free kick but they paddle it out in front of them. Robert Wood gets it out but it's picked up by number 24 and that's Alistair Williamson. He gets a handball across to uh, Brett Dolphin and he goes long down the ground looking for a player. Hang on it is in front of it there and he'll take the mark. Looks for the handball out quickly to number 30. That's uh, Stuart McGuinness. Stuart uh, running down the ground there, uh, paddles it out in front of him at uh, 24 for Horsham Graves putting a lot of pressure on him, he screws around, Mick Spalding onto the left foot, he drives it deep into attack, it's a wobbly old kick, but oh, a great effort to mark there by Young Hosking, the uh, rover, number 32, resting in that forward pocket, didn't quite pick it up, and uh, the ball goes out, right in front of the uh, Des Trotter scoreboard, now there's a the name you'll remember, Des Trotter, what a champion player he was in his day, five goals, three to one, four, it's deep in the pitch, picked up by Grant Kemp, he drives it out well, looking for Bone in front, but it's a good battle there between Bone and Jenny, down it comes onto the bottom of the ground. Bone is first in there after the ball again. He backs his pace, swings it around, but under a bit of pressure from his Ararat opponent, he'll put the ball out on the full, and the free kick will go to his immediate opponent, and that's David Jennings, number 11. Hickmott coming in on the mark, come back, says the umpire. That'll do experienced player there by David Hick uh, Peter Hickmott. He picked up the man on the mark. Onto his left foot goes Jennings, right across towards centre-half forward, puts the ball in there, had plenty of time there to uh, get underneath of his arm, but couldn't. Picked up by Kerr, he looks out in front there, puts it across to Toddy. Toddy leading Duncan in the race for the ball. This is a great battle these two. Plenty of pressure. Todd puts it back in along the ground, but it's a Horsham player first uh, in there who paddles it out in front. Mabelson. Picked up by Mabelson. He's a strong player in defence. Comes right across the ground, and Bone perhaps getting back on top of Jennings now. He goes around him. Gets away from him beautifully. Has a look up the ground. He'll look for Greg Wicks. No, he doesn't. He goes across there. It is Wicks. Wicks is in front. Should have taken the mark. Brett Dolkin gets it out. He finds uh, Alistair Williamson, who's a damaging player for our out. Goes around. A wobbly Murray kick onto his left foot to Murray McGinnis. Across there. Dolkin back oh, in the play. play. Good play by Dolkin. He gets it out Cunningham. Cunningham gets the run. They're fiddling around a little bit here. Stewie McGinn is a bad handball. Puts his opponent under lots of pressure and Graves comes through with a good front to relieve the pressure. But it's still folding back in there. He's working hard and he'll finish up with this ball. Done it beautifully. And they're back where they started in the centre of the ground. A lot of fiddling around and they didn't gain an inch then. Cole Thompson, he's got the ball. He'll drive the ball down long. He's looking down there for Dolkin. Dolkin is right across the ground. There's two Ararat players. The ball's on the ground. Here's Dolkin. He'll break away. Chris Dolkin gets the ball up. Steady. Puts it onto the left foot. Drives it into towards goal. And he put it right through the high bed of it. And that's number six for Ararat. And they really look the goods at this stage. Ararat, six goals, three, 39. Making a cake walk over here in the first quarter. One goal, four, ten points to Horsham. And Huey, really, you couldn't want, wish for a better start. No end being favoured by the breeze. And a six goal first term. Uh, it's a terrific start, isn't it? Very accurate kicking. Arrows seem to be having all the play at this stage. They're controlling the ball around the bottom of the packs in the air, and the handball's been very, very damaging. Running a lot more too, aren't they? Okay, the ball back in the centre now with uh, big Hobbs from Horsham there waiting to uh, to battle this one out. They've got to get the ball out of the centre more. Hobbs and Thompson doing battle. I think that's an even one. Thompson perhaps getting the advantage. 
picked Phil up Creek. by Phil Creek from Horsham, a wobbly looking kick coming out towards the half forward line, the bounce to lose the players, all well going done. through aggressively there was Bone, picked up and knocked up on there by Brett Dalton, terrific play, paddling the ball in front of him, Cunningham picks the ball up, a left foot kick, Moyle comes in there to spoil him, the ball on the half forward line for the Ararat club, moving in there is Murray McGuinness, McGuinness with a hand pass over, stolen by Peter Wood, picked, hit on to Peter White, Lights drop punt kick to the centre half forward position. Up they go. And a good mark by Neil Bowen there in the number five jersey. He's playing in front of Kemp down there. He must do so. He finds a loose man up there. Stuart McGuinness underrun the ball. Should have marked that on. Lovely tap out to Owen. Owen with a punt kick down towards Here's the Chris half forward line. That's Dalton there. He'll control the ball. Chris Dalton's got a break here. Left Dalton foot. with a left foot oh, snap towards goal. And I think he's, he's found got it at home. No, no he's missed. Off line. And one point there, six goals, four, 40 points Ararat to Horsham, one goal, four, 10 points, and Dick Dolgan looks dangerous when he gets that ball anywhere near him. Here we are, I think that's Duncan for Horsham kicking the ball back in, Thompson moving across, <laughs> but Hank Owens showing strength, and he takes that mark across the half forward line on the outer side of the ground. Hank Owen now kicked a beautiful goal earlier in the term. He's going short now, looking for Gary Todd. Todd drops and spares there, Duncan punches the ball away. Jason Morlow controls the ball and now kicks him in the centre of the ground. We've got Moyle against Brett Dalton. Dalton scores from behind and Light getting the crumbs there. Light on the left boot, down towards the half back forward line. And number 13 for Ararat, Darren Barr. Darren Barr clears the ball back towards the centre. There's two Ararat players there. Greg Curry eventually takes the mark. He's dropped front kick to the half forward line. Two players here. The ball's on the ground and Phil Creek's, Phil Creek's on the bottom of the Hank ground. Owen. Hank Owen now gets clear. Owen handballs to himself. Johnny and Johnny O'Callaghan gathers the ball. And Peter Hickmock comes in trying to clear the ball from our end. Jason Merlo finally gets the handball. Stewie Hobbs finds room. And now kicks the ball and clears again. Moving down towards the portion half forward line. Wicks and Cunningham. Cunningham which flicks the ball out the back rank. It looks a bit poppy, a little bit slow. Oh. May have an injury. He fumbles. Handballs over to Steve Rollins. Rollins coming up over to Bone. Bone turns back again. Rollins back. And it's the Arrat players dive on top of the ball. And there it is. That was very good defending by the Arrat. And then they were desperate and Horsham mucking around a little bit. Too many players standing back waiting for it to be put out to them in Horsham. And I think Ararat players were in there working very, very hard. The umpire bounces the ball right in the attacking zone. It's uh, two players up there. Moyle. Moyle gets the ball down to the ground. He should be in control of it, but a strong play by the Ararat defender. Gets it out to Dolkin. Dolkin, a lovely handball across to Hosking. Hosking puts it on his left boot. A beautiful pass down ground over the head of these two players, and Peter Light picks it up. Dumb as Shepherd for him well. Light has time. Looks for the player down the field. He goes across the ground. And a good lead there by uh, Grant Kemp, number 12 for Horsham, and he'll put this deep into attack, but there's nobody there to kick it to at this stage. He's going to wait for Moyle to get in there. Moyle's running in with his back to the play. No Horsham small players in there, uh, and Moyle's about one to three at this stage in the square. Kempe obviously thinks he can kick this one. He's going to put it right in there. He'll go very close. He's a beautiful kick of the ball. That's a lovely kick, but it's a little bit offline for mine. Slightly to the left-hand side of the goals. Right on the quarter time uh, uh, siren. And that's a point to Horsham. A fairly sad and sorry sight as we look at the, uh, the mobile scoreboard. At quarter time, Ararat, six goals, four, 40. Leading Horsham, one goal, four, we ten. Fairly BFL ordinary uh, quarter by the Horsham footy club here. Yeah, Horsham are got, not getting enough use to have service from players like Peter Light, Peter Hickman, and the they're rucking. Uh, they're also not using the ball anywhere near well enough compared to Ararat. The tap on and their handball has been terribly constructed. Really breaking up the Horsham defence. Players like Spalding on the wing, Jennings, Michael Hosky, Dalston Williams and these fellas have been boring down the ground, giving God all the opportunities in the world. Uh, I have to give uh, Kel Duncan a real pat on the back at this stage. Uh, Toddy scored one, but Duncan's worn him like a, a, a pair of gloves. Well, I said a wet blanket because oh, he's getting well, very I don't wet the bed, so I wouldn't know, but a pair no. of gloves will do. No, he's doing very well here. He's playing him very tight, and if uh, some of the Horsham fellows are a bit loose across the half back line, Jason Merlo's doing very well, but he can be a little bit loose at times. Horsham yeah. forward line uh, playing behind Pete, aren't they? They're, uh, they're not really uh, working hard enough in that forward line, are they? They are, Mike. With the, on the occasions, the ball did get down to the Horsham forward line. You had uh, Kemp playing behind. I think he's going to lift his game. Okay, here we 
going to start the second quarter of the 1986 Wimmer League Grand Final. As you can see, a, a big crowd in attendance. And Ararat have started the game off good style. Six goals, 4.40 to Horsham, one goal, 5.11. As uh, you Della Hunt, said the, before, the Horsham boys have to lift their game a little bit if they're going to get back into this one. Back in the centre, Hobbs and Thompson for Ararat to do battle. The ball's bounced to start the quarter. Hobbs coming over the top, Hickmott picks the ball up, the number of players in there, comes out free to Dalton, picked up and a handball back to Dalton, now Dalton tackled from behind by Mabelson, Woods comes in, picks the ball, he's tackled heavily by Chris Dalton, Dalton dives on the ball, picks the ball out, Wood firing it up, and now Peter Light gets the ball clear down to Horsham's half forward line, and Greg Wicks drops that mark, the umpire calls play on, Wicks still battling down there to try and get the ball out, Empire still calls play on. A boot goes in there by the Ararat defender. Grant Kemp take, take the Kemp free kick. Grant Kemp usually a good kick, and Kemp, uh, from Horsham's viewpoint, hopefully going to put this one through the centre and get them off to a good start in the second term of the 1986 grand final. Kemp on a difficult angle out there in front of the scoreboard. And I know Horsham, Horsham need this goal if they're going to get back into this game. At the start of the quarter, we've only been going nearly a minute. Kemp lines it up. Kemp's kick now, it's a drop punt, it looks pretty good, the boys are clapping and the umpire says yes, all clear, that's one goal and a good start to the Horsham club for the, in the second quarter, they moved to two goals, five, to six goals, four, Ararat, and uh, this is what they wanted here, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they showed a little bit more desperation getting out of the centre, Peter Wood driving in hard, got hit hard, but uh, got it out to Peter Light who drove it down, and then the Horsham boys, Kemp was in front for the first time, looks like he's playing in the forward pocket and they put Beaver Wallam and do full forward. Miles going back to centre half back, having another try on Dalton. Okay, the ball back in the centre. Down she goes. A bit of a wayward bounce there. Mapleson. You've got Mapleson leading in the race for the ball. He's trying to gather it, keeping the eye on the ball. He got one around the, around the shoulder, I think, that time. And the umpire says, she'll kick Andrew Mapleson. Mapleson goes back now on the wing position, looking forward, looking for a lead. He sees Peter Wood leading out Johnny there. And also Johnny O'Callaghan up. They go punched away by Dalton. Peter Light goes in heavily. And... Uh, Tony Birrell. Tony Birrell, the ball comes back to Light. Light now looking for Steve Wellerman. A beautiful pass by Light. Finds Wellerman directly in front, only 15 metres out, and uh, Horsham looking a lot better in the second turn. Wellerman's already kicked one goal. He's had kick 1-1. One, one. He missed the last shot he had directly in front, so it'll be interesting to see if he can make amends this time. He's kicked one goal, as we said in the first quarter. Lines up, runs in on his natural left foot. It looks there. like he's driven it through. Two goals in what? Two and a half minutes. It's a great start to the second quarter by Horsham. Six goals, 4.40 Ararat. And that brings Horsham to three goals, 5.23. So uh, a good start to Horsham. And the youth, they've got to keep this going, don't they? Well, Horsham are a side. If you, they get on top of you, they'll really run, drive into the dirt. And we'll hand over to Mick. A little bit surprised to see Hank Owen uh, starting out on the flank. I would like to see him starting the quarter back on the ball, Huey. Well, he's given all the drive there in the first quarter. It's a very surprising move. Certainly has. OK, the umpire goes back to uh, bounce the ball in the centre of the ground. Thompson Tom against Tom's. Uh, one of the uh, aspects of this game has been the magnificent bouncing of the ball by the umpires in the centre. This one's no exception. Up she goes again. Hobbs and Thompson. Hobbs goes up by himself. He gets the ball out towards David Bone. Jennings is in there with him. Woody is in there. Peter Wood, he pimples the crowd on the left foot. And he drives down towards centre half forward. John O'Callaghan's underneath the ball. He taps it on in front of him. Over it goes to Wallerman. Wallerman beaten to the ball by an Arab player who uh, bowed. He taps it out in front of him. And he gets the relieving kick out on towards the half-back flank. Jennings and Bone, they're having a really good battle out there. Jennings on top early and Bone's come back into the game. But Arab come out with a good handball and uh, put out towards Michael Hosking. He gets it on another good handball from the Ararat player across to Stewie McGuinness and they're in the true centre of the ground. Kerr drives the ball long. He goes down towards centre half court looking for the Ararat player there. It's Ararat in front balance. Got what he should have taken. The ball down to the runner. Williamson lines it up. He's running in and they've always got someone on the bottom of the pack. And Williamson pops it down to the top. Got him. Should have taken that mark. Wasn't able to hang on to it. And Williamson on the bottom of the pack number 24 ran into an open goal. Drove it over the top of Totty's head and another good answering goal by the Ararat side. You have certainly got the runners at the bottom of the pack, haven't they? They have, Mike, and it's interesting to note, uh, too, that, uh, that Thompson's still on the ball. You, he's usually, yeah, this uh, is a surprise, surprise because usually Bruce Fallon does a fair bit of the ruck work around the centre and Cole Thompson does in the forward line. I don't think Thompson's been off the ball at this stage, and this is a surprising move by the Arrowhead Football Club. At this stage of the quarter, we've had one goal, we've had three goals scored in about four minutes. It's been tremendous football in this Wimmer League Grand Final. Shane McDonald's about to bounce the ball. OK, up they go. Thompson and Hobbs. 
Thompson getting that one down to Light. Light with a handball over his head to Mabelson. Mabelson looking up forward to Steve Wallerman. Backing back into the pack. Wallerman holding both players. Holding Steven on Smith on the bottom Steven of the pack. Smith into the goal. And he's put it through. A goal to Smith. And gee whiz, it's raining goals over here at the moment. A number being scored on the horse and fellows. Just what they wanted. An answering goal to Ararat. And it's a good, good standard of football, Mike. Great play there by Peter Light out of the centre. He sparked it off. He handballed over the top to uh, Mapleson, I think it was, from memory. Yes. Throw the ball long, and uh, that's where it started. They win the ball out of the centre, and Beaver Wallerman is giving them something to kick to down in that full forward square that they didn't have early in the first quarter. Ball coming back to the centre of the ground. Ararat players trying to fire up. Uh, it's interesting there that Owen still hasn't gone onto the ball. I can't understand this. They're hoping to uh, run through this half fourth leg with him, obviously, but uh, they've got to get the ball out of the middle for a start. Thompson and Hobbs. Been a pretty good uh, ruck duel in the centre. No, it's Brucey Valance has come on the ball. He must have heard you, fellas. Valance and Hobbs going for the knock in there. It's a beautiful bounce. Hobbs has got the intensity. Pimplewood picks it up. He's tackled. Too slow getting rid of the ball. Battling away from him there. And, uh, Johnny O'Kelly at the bottom of the pack. And the umpire says, thanks very much. He'll ball it up and we'll try it once again by Savile. Two excellent VFL umpires have done a great job so far today. Puts the ball down. Balance and Hobbs. Hobbs gets the tap again. Nobody in particular there. Phil Creech in there. Peter Light comes out with the ball. Drives it right down into the square. Wallerman's in there again. Can't uh, handle to this mark. Plenty of pressure there by Barl in the back pocket. And uh, Balance uh, almost on purpose. He's driven that one out. But he uh, has, uh, has hooked it around. Well, I thought he went straight for the boundary line. Here we go. Hit in front of goal. Let Horsham kick it. Well, I'd have, I'd have given it against him, wouldn't you? I don't know. Here we go. She's thrown in there. Plenty of uh, players in for the bottom of the pack. Uh, but Williamson comes out. They're roving well. He's doing a great job, Williamson, around the ground. He kicked their goal a minute ago. Didn't uh, dispose of the ball terribly well. And it comes out here and Peter Wood uh, takes the mark. And he'll put it right into the 10-yard square. Horsham players not really moving around much in that forward line. They're prepared to stand and wait for the ball to be kicked up in the air where perhaps two or three should be running and moving all the time as happens in the Ararat forward line. Woody lines it up. 40 to 45 yards out, he'll put it right into the 10 yard square, it's a wobbly old kick. Plenty of players in there, Wallerman's up there, but it's all white arms up into the pack. Snapped Peter up Hick, by Peter Hickmott like a rover, like a two year old, uh, Hick picks it up on that left foot and the big number nine comes up and Horsham are back in business. They've kicked four in about five minutes, Huey, and they're in there with a real chance. It's a different game, isn't it? Yeah, as you say, with uh, Peter Wallerman going to 4 4, they've given him something to kick to, he's playing in front and therefore all the other Horsham footballers are lifting to the occasion and starting to play from in front and using the ball a lot better. Peter Hickmott rode the ball well. He's got to get into the game. He played a tremendous game last week, and if they're going to have a chance, he's got to play well. Todd's Notice. come out to centre-half forward. That's an interesting one. I'd have kept Kel Duncan with him. I'd have brought him with him. Uh, but uh, Todd's come out, and uh, who's gone to full forward? Huey, can you Murray pick that McGuinness. up? Murray McGuinness. Murray McGuinness. That's an interesting. Would you have brought Kel Duncan out with him? No, I wouldn't. I think Graham Moore's got to be played out there. He's such a good kick, and uh, the way Orson are going, I don't think they want to go too defensive. Interesting that Toddy's come out, isn't it? He doesn't do that very often. I think that's a bad move. But as you said, Hank Owen's got to be put back on the ball if Arrow are going to get into this game. He's been off the ball too long. And also, it's interesting that uh, Chris Dolkin's in the centre of the ground there. He's on the ball. Ararat, Mapleson leading to the, in the race for the ball out there. He doesn't pick it up cleanly. A push in the back by Jennings. Jennings worked hard. Dolkin is on the ball, but Jennings kicks it off the ground. Real soccer fashion there, but Mark Ray's playing in front of his opponent. Pretty reliable. He drives it out towards Peter Light. Gets right under it, but not quite far enough. And the ball will go out of bounds on the full. And Mark Rose not under a lot of pressure there and went a little bit too wide. The free kick to Ararat. Ararat on the true wing, right on the uh, the other side of the ground. Summers, the halfback flanker. He comes in. He puts a wobbly old kick down. What an awful one, but it's picked Richard. up and pulled forward by Kerr. Kerr at centre half forward. He comes around. He's looking for McGuinness, who's out in front of Duncan. Duncan, very uh, good play there. Punches it away. The ball's on the ground. Big Hobbsy doing great work. He gets it out, runs away from him like a rover, and puts the ball deep, deep into their Horsham's attacking zone. Wixie's underneath the ball there, and also number 12 for Horsham Kemp. They fight for it. Uh, Wix gets it out. He handballs across to O'Callaghan. Pelican puts it in right into the 10 yard square. Stephen Smith under it. It's a good kick in there. Oh, almost two grabs to Stephen Smith, but there's too many Ararat players. And uh, Beryl has popped it through. He just made the handball it through and uh, concede the point. But Horsham are right back into this game. And uh, who would have thought this 10 minutes ago a completely new complexity has come over it? Ararat seem to have stopped to a walk. Their running players uh, have, have stopped at this stage, Pete. They have, and uh, they're going to have to lift their game if they're going to, uh, to get. Continue on. Neil Valance kicks the ball out towards the half forward line. A pack of players there heading towards the boundary line. Beryl runs in, picks it. He sees a dog and there goes Alexi over the top of his head. And here he is, Jason Merlot takes a mark in front of Hank Owen. Merlot looks for Peter Light. The centre wing Light now going back looking for this. There's a number of moves coming out there. Pelican's moving. He's looked for him and he's found him on the chest. A terrific pass from Peter Light. And uh, Pelican with the ball at the true centre half forward position. Brett Dolgan on the mark. 
Uh, Callaghan sees a terrific lead from Peter Hickmott and finds him on the chest. And uh, gee whiz, it's uh, pretty loose defending by the Ararat players at this stage of the game. Peter Hickmott directly in front, 35 metres out from goal. And uh, this fellow's experience, I dare say, he should put this one through the centre. Hickmott moving in there, taking his time. It's a nice kick. That guy moves across, but it looks okay from here. Yes, here's another goal. That's five goals this quarter. Six goals, six. 42 to Ararat, seven goals, four, 46. And they reckon cricket's a strange game, Pete. Yeah, my word, gee whiz, uh, a few fellas trying to get a bet on it quarter time, I think you, they might be uh, changing well, their mind again. Well, I don't know what Ararat are going <laughs> for odds or not, but I can't work out why they've taken Chris Tolkien away from centre half forward, put him in the centre to try and stop Peter Light. Peter Light uh, has been notorious for picking up players, but now he's got someone picking him up, so this is an interesting move by Ararat, and Hank Owen is still on the half forward plane. Cole Thompson, you wouldn't use Chris Tolkien as a tagger, Huey. Well, I can't see why they should put him into the centre if he's Peter Lye's starting to cause a bit of worry there. Phil Creek handballs it across to Hobbs. He's coming into the game now. Stuart McGuinness is over the top of the ball, taps it out to Andrew Mabels and across to A. Callaghan. And he's away again, John A. Callaghan down to Beaver Wallerman, who's in front. Great stuff by Fellows, who just got his hand in the ball and pushed it over the bad line. Busham again are playing in front and looking very dangerous at this stage. Yarrow players seem to be all looking over the shoulder, looking for one of their teammates to do the work instead of getting on doing the job himself. Cole Thompson's back into the ruck by the look of it. He's gone for the ruck across to Alistair Williamson. Handballs it across to Brett Dolph. And he looks for someone down the ground with his left foot. Across to David Jennings. Oh, but no, he didn't get it. Here's Greg Kerr. He's got the ball. Turns inboard on his right foot. Drives it down to uh, Gary Todd and Moyle. Moyle could get away for a kick. Jennings has got a lovely pick up by Jennings. A beautiful left foot kick. And it looks like it's been shepherded through by Michael Hostin. Well done by Michael Hostin. And great work by David Jennings. When the Cormara come down the ground, they look dangerous. And it's about the first time they've come into the forward line this quarter. And they've kept it all. Second time, they've both times they've come down, they've kicked goals. So great work by Jennings. And of course, the shepherding by Michael Hostin was good work too. Kip, Yogi Kip out of the play. A timely goal to the outside, side. Just giving them that buffer again. And uh, that's just what they needed to steady themselves down a bit and uh, can go on with it from here. But a terrific comeback by Horsham and we've got a great game of football on our hands here at Anzac Park in the grand final. Even though Bones been a good player, I think I'd be still swapping wings and uh, putting Creek on uh, to play a defensive role on uh, mm. that fellow over there, Jennings. Yes. OK, the bounce of the ball in the centre again. Graves against Thompson back on the ball now. Williamson, Williamson breaks clear from Arap from the centre. He goes down straight towards goal. Arap there and a good mark there. Murray McGuinness taking the mark in the forward pocket. What sort of an angle would that be, Mike? Yes, oh, about 1.3, Pete. OK, and only about uh, 20 metres out from goal. And uh, Murray McGuinness should put this one through for the Ararat side. Eight goals, 4.52 to six goals, 6.42. Ararat, 10 points in front at the moment. McGuinness across the face of goal and he's put that one out of bounds on the full in the back pocket. Yogi so Kemp there will take the, ball, take the ball and put it back into play. He'll kick down on the grandstand side. Too. There's not a lot happening. A big flag of players coming across, building across the half-back. There's Moyle and Thompson. Up goes Moyle and he takes the mark. He'll just have a look around and move the ball forward out of the danger zone for Horsham. He sees Hickmott a leading up forward. Hickmott coming across, his eyes on the ball, and O'Kelly in there, the man in front, the Cyril for Ararat, he pulls out towards Michael Spalding from Ararat, moves on the left foot over his shoulder, Cole Thompson there, Thompson with a handball, and he comes on the face, but Cyril goes on with the job, Cyril now drives it deep into attack, and up there is... Player at the back. And running away with it was young Williamson, Williamson roving the pack well, over the top of the table came, Williamson came in and put it through, and Ararat goes further ahead. That's, that's his third goal. This bloke was battling to get back into the side this year and he's roved it extremely well there, but it was well shepherded by Greg Kerr coming across the pack and really opened it up for him. Won their best and fairest last year, Huey, didn't he? I believe so, but uh, he's been battling to get into the senior side this year and uh, he's, what, he's kicked three goals, one in the first and two in this quarter. So Hank Owen's still out on this half-forward flank. Um, uh, Chris Dolphin in the centre of the ground as the umpire goes to bounce the ball. Graves it is uh, against Cole Thompson. Beautiful bounce of the ball by the umpire again, straight up in the air. Thompson does it well, but it's taken by Mabelson. He gets it quickly on the boot, comes across there, but it's all our out. And Jennings taking a good timely mark across that halfback flank. He'll put on his left foot and he'll go wide. Toddy is making the move there and signalling to stay on that side of the ground. Across it goes. Moyle's got the set. He punches it away. 
punch a second grab. He got it away. Comes onto the ground. Horsham player Peter Light it was there. He gets it across to Mark Gray. Can't pick up what he should have. Screws it around onto his right boot. And it's out there on the true wing. But Jennings underneath it again. And uh, he takes a very good mark. And he'll settle it down for our out across. He looks for the handball to the running player. And coming down uh, from the, uh, the halfback line was that our out player. He's kicked it out under no pressure. And put it across there and out of bounds. Deep in uh, attack for our out. Could have perhaps come across a little bit more towards the centre of the ground. Umpire throws the ball in there, balance against uh, Hox. Good battle, balance using his strength, comes down to Moyle, he kicks on his left hand, handballs to no one in particular, Jennings in front of Bone, who takes it, screws it around again, a little bit of pressure, it's out of bounds on the full, and the resultant free kick to uh, Stephen Hobbs, the ruckman from Horsham. Nobody right up on the mark at this stage, so Hobbs picks up four or five metres, and he drives the ball long down and over the centre of the ground. Plenty of players in underneath there, Peter Hickmott, but over the back comes Tolkien, he punches it away, wood on the ground, rover quickly, but the ball's on there, and plenty of players jumping on top of it, steadying it down, and the umpire says that uh, we'll have her again, fellas, we'll ball it up at about the, what time, Mark Huey? 15 minute mark, a little bit over halfway through this quarter, nine goals, four hour at, Horsham six goals, six, Horsham certainly back in this game, bounces it up there, graves it is, and Thompson, well uh, rowed by Dolkin, doesn't take it away, but it's quickly picked up by a, an hour at player, Hosking is in there, he's a busy little rover, the ball's on the ground, plenty of scrambly play, eventually David Bone, he gets a handball over to Hickmott, Hickmott looks to handball on further down the ground, it's across to uh, Mark Graves, he'll put it deep into the 10 yard square, drives it down, looking for Beaver Wallerman, he's got the set, can't mark it though, balance is strong, Wallerman gets in, handball's out in front of him, plenty of Horsham players, but plenty of pressure there from the Arad players, Stephen Smith, ever elusive, picks it up on the ground, scrags it round, and one point only, perhaps should have steadied a fraction there, and it would have been a very important goal for Horsham there, but good play, they battled it down there and, uh, and have scored, full back balance, he kicks the ball out, looking for a player out in front, it's that uh, little fellow uh, Hoskins again, who's playing uh, a very good game around the ground, he'll drive the ball long, it's a wobbly old floater down there, nobody in particular, in front of the pack of speed of line, he falls over where he should have gone on, Jenny, he gets him across the goal, and Chris Tolkien goes, one bounce, oh a terrible old six from Dolphin, it's off the side of the boot, and Jason Merlow butters up, he goes down the ground, into the centre of the ground, but it's all out again, it's falling, showing lots of pace, boy if this guy got what it takes, he drives the ball long, deep into attack for our rat, coming over the back uh, is Kerr, he's strong, handballs out in front to uh, number 33, Spalding, who's followed it right down the ground, paddles it across to Kerr, he'll go straight across the ground, looking for Toddy, let's see, uh, straighten up the angle, but good play by Horsham, Toddy, strength, pace clear, moves it around, him, and he's put it right through the middle, and there's number 98, 98 for Horsham, good play by our rat, they squared the ball up, 98 for Todd, he squared the ball up to him then. It looked like it wasn't going to come off for a minute, but he's used his strength, and uh, Ararat have uh, started to settle down a bit. Uh, Owen's still out on this half foot flank. We're harping on about this a bit, I suppose, but gee, he was such a dominant player in that first quarter. But that was strong play then by Toddy, and he's got two on the board. Interesting to note that uh, Wixie's come off, and Robbie Woods moved on to that half forward flank over there. Woods with his leg bandaged fairly heavily, and. Uh, He's moved onto the ground. Wixie hadn't done a lot, Peter. That's a, probably uh, a move I would have made at this stage of the game. The ball back in the centre of the ground. Still Moving down centre-half forward Stephen line. Smith. Stephen Smith kicks the ball forward for Ararat. Mark Cunningham. Mark Cunningham pushes the ball in front of him. Over comes O'Callaghan. The ball smuggled through there by Cunningham. Cunningham with the ball in front of him. It's deep in horse and forward pocket. He's tackled heavily. What will the umpire do here? He calls play on. Woods comes out of the pack with the ball onto his right foot. He goes goalwood. It looks pretty good from here. No, it's just the place of the guy. Uh, three for one point, and that brings Horsham to six goals, 8.44, to Ararat, 10 goals, 4.64, and it's a great game of football. Looks like they've got uh, Stuart McGinnis picking up light in the centre. Looks like Chris Dockham might be on the ball as a ruck rover. Okay, Kenny's the taking the mark over there on the half-forward line, natural left foot again. There's a lot of left footers out in this ground today. Thompson and Hobbs fight for the ball across to Chris Dockham, the man we were talking about. Bounce the ball, he should handball across. No, he's gone left foot down. The back, Todd's at the back. No, it's been hit. Kerr's on top of the ball. And uh, he's got it there, he's played on, ran on his left foot. Hooks it into the centre like he did last time. Murray McGinnis has got the city. Oh, could have been a free kick. Punched out to Rod Dumsey. Oh, he missed it, but he should have taken. Greg Kerr comes through hard. And he's hooked it across. And what is it? We'll wait on a decision. It's a great goal. Strong play by Kerr, Huey. He's played very well, Kerr. He's, every time he's got the ball, he's looked for someone that's... Two or three times he's come down that other half forward flank and centre the ball like a true professional player should and he's given the arrow forwards every opportunity to run into an open goal and score the majors. A little bit of panic here, uh, Peter Light calling the runner out quickly and waving his arms around. Um, he's a strong player, Kerr, isn't he, uh, Huey, out there and he's been instrumental in a lot of moves. That's ten goals scored this quarter, a terrific uh, quarter with plenty of goals being scored. Yes, it's tremendous football and 
Uh, both sides are doing the job. But interesting to see who's going to crack first. We've got Stephen Hobbs up against Cole Thompson. Thompson's back on the ball. Across to Stuart McGinnis. He handballs along out to Brett Dolphin. He'll hit it on. Bone goes through hard. Brett Dolphin's hit it out. Brett Lloyd kicks it. David Jennings again got it. Handballs out to Brett Dolphin. Beautiful football. Long down to the forward line. Rod Dumas is in front of Kerr. But bad bounce. And then through goes Bruce Dolphin. Well pushed out of the way by Mark Gray. Rod Dumas, he handballs oh. over the top. And here's Hank Owen. Moore comes through strong. Looks for a player coming down the ground across to Andrew Mapleson. Beryl's wearing him like a shirt. In front we have Peter Woods. Uh, Beryl's got the fall of the ball again. And he'll look for someone. Oh, he's could be penalised there. He's very lucky. Stuart McGinnis tries to handle. Phil Creek comes through. Oh, well, great smother by Tony Burrell. Tremendous with Peter White coming through hard. Across to Pepper Wood. He handles across to O'Callaghan. He's, he's gone. He's been tackled. Play on to the umpire. Portion was really battling here, and the arrow fellas are trying to. And he lets it go, doesn't he? The umpire. Yeah, the umpire has let it go. I think it's been great umpiring, though, and uh, the arrow fellas have really covered up well there because Horsham had the fall of the ball every time. Paul Savile's about to bounce the ball. Cole Thompson again, using his strength. No one's prepared to go with him. And there we have Phil Creek. Hasn't done a lot. Pimplewood's trying hard. He's over he goes to Mike Spiling. He looks for a handball down the ground. Here's Hank Owen. He'll hit it on again. Pete Hickman comes through strong. Goes on his left, right, handball centre to Peter Light. He's in trouble here. Oh, great stuff by Stephen Hobbs. He's a lovely kick of the ball. He's put it out in front of the forwards. Grant Kemp's playing from behind. Oh, he pushed him in the back. Yes, we all picked up one. That was a hard kick. That's the first free kick I think Aaron's got this quarter. There's been one free kick each according to my statistician here. And here we have... What's his name, you? <laughs> Joe Blake, Chris Dalton in front. Hits it on. Bruce Valance is well behind. Mark Ray's leading out. Rod Dummers will be there first for the ball. Oh, good tackle. No, he's got through. Strong play by Rod Dumasy. Kick it down to David Boney. Handballs it over to Stephen Smith. We've got the runners now. What can we should have bounced the ball, but he's driven down. Johnny O'Kelly is trying desperately hard here. Green kick, handballs it out. Across to Andrew Mapleton, who should kick this one. Yes, it's great stuff. They've really worked hard for their goals, and it was good work by Beaver Wallerman. Good handball across to Andrew Mapleton. And he kicks what is his first goal for the game in the second quarter. 20 points of difference here at the moment. What, how far are we gone here in the second term? 21 minutes in the second term. Ararat with a 20-point advantage and uh, a great game of football. Horsham coming back into the game. Ararat still have played reasonably well. A couple of surprise moves, but uh, here comes Kemp's Kemp coming off the coming ground. Off the ground. Kerry Kermon. Looks to be limping a little bit with a uh, proppy leg. Oh, I think he's been struggling to get into the game John a bit, Peter, Henry to be honest. Russell, please go to the secretary's office, please. I think they're looking for a little John bit more Henry. run around that forward line. They've put Wallam in a bit more pace. Yeah. They're looking for little players to be in underneath. Here we go. Back in the centre of the ground. Hobbs takes the ball with a hand pass to Moyle. Moyle onto the left foot. Kicks the ball over the centre of the ground. Brett Dolkin there. Taken off the pack by Mabelson. Mabelson up to full forward. We've got Wallerman behind. He punches the ball down to Pimple Wood, who's raving the pack well. Wood Great over runs it. He's back in it again. Wood collects the ball, goes this way and that way. And the thing he's a bit too short. long. The umpire's oh. called play on. And Arat take it out of the back line through Beryl. Beryl with a super oh. pass. Right Beryl Merritt reincarnated. A magnificent pass down there to Valance. Valance now looks Todd forward. And Arat moving the ball very well at this stage of the day. Todd. A nice kick down of the full forward position there. Chris Dalton flies across the front of the pack. And Dalton takes a terrific mark in front of those Horsham defenders. Peter Hickmont being one of them. About 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle. And Chris Dalton, you should be able to put this one through. I think he should. He's a very experienced footballer. And he realised the importance of goals in grand finals. Peter Hickmont standing on the mark. Looks like Peter's playing on him. Giving him too much latitude. Oh, Chris Dalton might another one. Oh, it's an hour eight mark. And he's got this McGinnis. one. It looks like Murray McGuinness. The smallest man in the, in the middle pack, of two of them. In the middle of two Horsham fellas, and he's taken the mark. Tremendous effort. Kel Duncan's done very well. I don't know if he was in front or behind then, but the fellow... Duncan the back, was it behind and well, uh, Moyle was in front. Punch. Should have gone on the punch, but Murray McGinn, it's the smallest fellow, and he's kept... Oh, yes, what's the umpire doing here? He's, he says it's an all clean decision, and it's one more goal to Murray McGinn. OK, 12 goals, 4, 76. Ararat for Horsham, 7 goals, 8, 50... And we must about just be moving into time on here. Toddy in the gone back term. to full back. They're swapping around in that forward full line. Forward. Full forward. They're swapping around in that forward line a fair bit. And it looks like Dolkin's gone across back to uh, to centre half forward. And uh, Murray McGinnis coming down towards that half forward flank. So they're, they're a lot more adaptable than Horsham in their forward line, aren't they, at this stage? They are. And it's interesting, the last two times Mr. Skills has had the ball, Hugh, he's mucked it up, hasn't he? Yeah. I well, he didn't do much wrong that well, time. He, he just didn't get the distance. Well, he down at Collingwood. That's what they're used to doing down there. Oh, come on, Hugh. He did oh, you like well, some one-eyed. He could have, you know... Give him one in the ribs, Pete. 
as we said, the Ararat forward line looks far more dangerous than the uh, Horsham forward All line right. at this stage. All uh, right, Thompson and uh, who is it? It's Wallerman on that. It's Mark Graves on the ball there in the centre of the ground. Down it comes. That's the little fella Hosking. He yes, feeds Spalding. a handball out beautifully to Spalding. Spalding with a lovely pass. Toddy tries everything, but it's over his head. The ball's on the ground. Here's Big Hobbsy. He'll run away. He's quick. Puts it onto the left foot. A wobbly old kick. Defence has kicked. It'll beat them all over the boundary line. There's plenty of Ararat players there uh, at the fall of the ball. But it uh, beats them all over the boundary line. And Ararat looking a lot uh, stronger in the second half of the second quarter. They were in a bit of trouble early, but they've come back well. And uh, they're deep into attack. Throws the ball in. It's balance and uh, Moyle. Moyle puts it over the back. It'll be Hank Owen first for the ball. It's be his first touch for the quarter, I would say. Jason he, Merlo he hits do it well with it. Merlo puts it out. David Bone leads in the race for the ball, but Jennings is in there. Merlo gets it out. The halfback flank of well, the horse. A wobbly yes. old kick. Smothered it was. Yes, young Stewie Coombe, Coombe, his hard. first touch in a grand final. Robbie Wood gets it down touch. to Robbie Wood. He gets it across to his coach, Peter Light. In lots of trouble He's for Light. And holding the ball, says the umpire. Pretty uh, hard there, but he was well tackled by three opponents. And uh, Arrowhead come out with this ball at centre half back. They'll look for Dolphin. Darren Dolphin Bale, uh, moving. Then, He's being picked up. Looks Bruce over Valance. there for Bruce Valance. Bruce Valance's opponent not to play him close enough. Gets it across to Stewie McGuinness. He's using plenty of room. And here's young, uh, 32, young, young Michael Hosking. Greg Over Curry. he goes room to, to run in and have a kick goal. this. He lines it up. Puts Mate. it down there. He'll make the distance. And that's another good goal to, uh, to Kerr. That's his third goal. He's kicked two in this corner. Been a very damaging play if they out across the half-forward line. Doing very well. Murray McGuinness did it well out of the centre uh, of the ground there and brought the ball down. He got it across there to... Uh, Young uh, Michael Hosking it was and got it across. And Kerr's uh, showing a lot of strength. He's been a very damaging player. He's, he opens up the forward line. As we see, Arrowhead have had eight goal kickers at this stage. The Horsham's five goal kickers. So that's a the difference. They've got more avenues to go. Well, they kick 13 down. to 7, Huey. Well, the point is that they've got a lot of goal kickers. <laughs> that's a good point. OK, back into the centre. Mark Graves giving away a few inches to Thompson. Thompson's rucked almost non-stop at the centre bounces. Another beautiful bounce by the umpire. Ups it goes. Thompson gets the ball, but it's picked up by Peter Hickmott. He kicks into the man on his mark. They're battling away again. The Ararat player kicks it off the ball, off the ground. Here's Todd and Duncan. They're having a great battle. Out it comes to Hickmott. He's worked hard to get down there. Gets it across to Stephen Hobbs in the back line. And Hobbs a That'd big, be a long, 75 an 80, meter kick. 82 hey. metre kick it is down there. Horsham at the bottom of the pack. Peter Light's in there. Across it goes to Andrew Mapleson. He steadies. He looks for a player. Snaps it around beautifully. And Peter Light, who's made a lovely position to get back there, takes the uh, mark at the true centre-half forward position for the Demons. He'll put the ball deep into attack. Wallerman will be his target. And the little fellow Smith and Coombe should be at the bottom of the pack. You can see when Mapleson and Light get hold of the ball, or even Mark Rose, they're very experienced footballers and do a lot with the ball. We've seen Mapleson, rather than just bang the ball on the foot, really work the ball around and look for Peter Light. Peter Light kicks the ball long into the 10-yard square. Is it going to make the difference? Being shepherded through, but John O'Callaghan gets hands on the ball. Pressured by Valance and uh, or pressured by Brett Dolkin there in the long sleeves and uh, it's one point to Horsham taking them on. 13-4 to, to uh, 7 haven't got that one up there yet, 7 something to Horsham. Ball's back Good. down at the centre of the ground. Plenty of Horsham players. Well, they tap on out. Away goes Bain. Graves. He'll, he'll take one Ooh, down. That's it confidence. Down. Puts it across there. Oh, a bad well hand. Smothered well by smothered by Stuart McGuinness. Great uh, play by Arad. Arad backing up all the time. McGuinness, he gets the handball across to uh, the young fellow Hosking. He's been a damaging player. Down he goes. Over the top. He's Kerr again. A good player. Back to Hosking. Todd's in there. They're mucking around a little bit. Toddy will get it out to Kerr. Kerr's running unattended. Screws it around. He's having a magnificent grand final, this fella. Puts it down deep into attack. And just have a look for us, Pete, to see who picks Kerr up. Because whoever it is, they're giving him stacks and stacks of room. He's running down as a loose player into that forward line all the time. They look like they're leerizing some of these arrow players. They're playing that well. Well, here's Kerr. He's out here on. He's on his own at centre half forward. A very damaging player. The umpire throws it in. Hobbs gets it down to the front of the pack. Plenty of pressure. Players are on the ground. Dolkin's in there, I can see. Pushed out by Kemp. Yogi Kemp, number four. He attacks the ball. He pushes it out towards his coach, Peter Light. Lighty, a good handball across back there to uh, Dumasney. Dumasney now is down the ground. And Gray standing in the middle of the ground takes it himself. He'll go across here to Phil Creek. No, he doesn't. Tries to go direct. The player came in across the mark from Light. Shouldn't have been there, but he smothered the ball. And our rat go back into attack. Spalding's a good player. Over the top, and he primes big Bruce Bells. He'll go on his left foot. Swings it around in there towards Todd and Duncan. They're working hard. Todd gets the ball. Well tackled by Duncan. He hands balls it off and here's big Stephen Hobbs picks the ball up again and he'll come straight across the ground puts himself under a lot of pressure but puts it on his left foot and Moyle will be first to the ball Graham Moyle working out here hard he's well backed up by Creek Creek doesn't ship him when he's got it could have helped him out there and Kerr who's having a hell of a final here he's on first on the ball laying on top of the ball and the umpire says give it to me fellas and, uh, and I'll fill it up well Mike they've left Kerr out here on the half forward like all on his own I can't see who's picking him right, up yet nobody's he's, picked him up at this he's stage he's having a field day the ball will be bounced on the half-forward flank for the Ararat side. 
late in this second term. Hobbs takes the ball out of their hand, balls in the direction of Wood. Wood can't get it. Thompson comes through. Michael Hosting collects the ball. Shows the turn of speed. Kicks the ball up towards the full forward line. It's all Horsham there at the moment. And the ball there is... The Horsham fellas are not helping each other right there before. Phil Creek should have shepherded line. Moyle through. But and there'll be going a... there, Merlot should have shepherded through Cal Duncan. And a bit more talk a... would come from the Horsham fellas that they'd help each other a little bit more there. A throw in in the forward point. Moyle goes up. Valance Bruce Valance feels the ball. He's a natural left footer, so he's in trouble. It didn't look like he had a right hand. Great tackle by Gary Todd. And over to Rod Dummis, he just blow, puts it onto the boot. Peter Light's in front for the ball. Bring closely. Well, Jenny's has come through strongly. The Alistair Williams is in front for the ball. Oh, he's backed out of it. He's got a handball across. No, well done by Pippa Wood. We're not teaming up as well as Arad fellas. Here's Kerr again, the danger man. Well, well smothered. Hobbs has got it across to Jason Willow. And he looks across to Mark Graves. He's in his fellow. Look, look at him. He looks, looks to see who he can find. He's gone across to Peter Light. Took a little bit long. Well smothered by him. He gets us across to Cole Thompson. Oh, a bit hold of the pocket, but good decision now. But I thought he oh, I would have saved head. that the other way. No yeah, we way. Thought he got him round the neck. I thought it was a great tackle, a strong tackle by Mark Graves. He handballs across to Peter Light. They move the ball quickly. He drives it down, but Darren Bale's there. He comes through, Valance is coming through, taps it on. Cross to O'Callaghan. Oh, he grabbed hold of him, Stephen Smith. Grabbed hold of that man there, and it's on again. The there we know one player. Play on. Here they go. Ararat breaking free across the half back line. And the ball's kicked down to centre wing. We've got Moyle and we've got Dalton. Moyle with the fist out, tries to punch it away. A big battle oh, there. Yeah. Dalton breaks. Here's Kerr on his own. No one's picked him up Kerr again. On his Runs into an open goal. Kerr. Pushed after he's kicked the ball, the umpire says no. The ball off the side of his boot and out of bounds on the full, but Mike Kerr... Peter, I watched own. him for two minutes there. He stayed in this forward line on this half-forward flank and not one Horsham player within 30 yards of him. Unbelievable. Yogi Kemp down there in the back pocket. Michael We've Hoffman been going five mate. minutes into time on. Yogi Kemp to bring the ball back into play. He'd be looking for big Moyle. Moyle there. Yeah. Kerr there, Kerr in front. Moyle over the back. Can't take the mark. The ball comes to ground. Kicked out to Hobbs there. Hobbs will go over to Pimple Wood. Wood takes the ball on the centre wing. With a left foot pass. Looking for O'Callaghan. He oh, should have taken that, mate. should have taken that one. A strong play Mabelson by Mabelson. There. But well he can't get through. Mabelson again. The umpire says that's against you, Horsham, I think. And uh, the ball to come back to the half-back line for Ararat. Danny Melvin, they would have reported Mabelson for that. For time penalty. wasting, but it was a good professional uh, 15 yards and that this Mabelson is, gave away there. This is Birrell here, isn't it? Yes, Tony Birrell. With Stephen the Hobbs is picking up uh, Kerr. OK, Birrell to the centre-half forward position. The big plot players fly there. Graham Moyle takes money. Tries to play oh, on. Well done by Kerr Kerr again. Off the ground. Down Lots towards Todd at full there. forward. In they go again. Todd Lots off the ground. Kicks it to Michael Hosking. Hosking. Oh, oh for a lovely goal. work. There we are. Terrific play and teamwork by the Ararat side. And they're really putting it together in UT which they look good. They look tremendous. They're helping each other all the time. Strong work by Gary Todd. who really put his... Hip and shoulder into Kel Duncan. Got him with the position to tap it onto Michael Hosking. And that's their ninth goal kicker in Michael Hosking. Finishing off the great work of Gary Todd. OK, we must be nearly up to the 30 minute mark. 32 minutes gone, Peter. It's been a long quarter. has been a lot of goals scored. Uh, Horsham have kicked, uh, what have we got there? Horsham have kicked six and our out have kicked eight. So there's been 14 goals kicked this quarter. Tremendous quarter of... Women League football here. 88 plays 51. Ararat in command at the moment in the second term. Late in the second term here at Warwick Nabil. Ball back in the centre. We've Bruce Valance has changed with Cole Thompson and we've got uh, Valance up against Stephen Hobbs. Wood there. Mapleson in the centre there as well for Horsham. The ball's tapped out by Valance. Comes Pretty to Hickpot. Hickpot. Hickpot grabs the ball. Moyle gets control, loses it. Gives Rod the ball Dumsley. across to Rod Dumsney. Dumsney out to centre wing. The sun in the player's eyes oh, out there. Great, but a great by David there. Jennings. For David Jennings, and he'll just settle it down now on centre wing. Jennings looking downfield. A left foot drop punt towards the half forward line. Graves spoils it. Murray there. McGinnis is Murray leading McGinnis the ball here in front in of right Dumsey. Ball. Gets a handball across to Alison Williamson. He'll hook it in left foot. Now he handballed it in front of him, and it's gone over, over the line for a boundary throw in an error. It's half forward line. Peter, I might be wrong, but I think that uh, Mapleson perhaps might be picking up Kerr because they pick each other up at the centre and then Kerr drifts down on this half-forward flank. Mapleson continues on after the ball. I'll be having a word to him at half-time then, Mike. That's the way uh, Greg Kerr plays. Oh, great mark by Stephen Stuart Coombe there. He hasn't been on the ground a hell of a long time and this is his second possession. He'll look for uh, Beaver Wallam and leads out strong. He's in front. Good work by Valance. Taps it out. Robbie Wood's in there fighting for the ball. Looks like the boundary... Uh, 
umpire's going to call for a bounce up. Beaver Wallam and Leeds are a lot better than Grant Kemp did them. If they can get the ball down to him, he'll finish it off. We have uh, Beaver Wallam in the ruck against Valance. Valance punches the ball out of the flank, and there's a siren for the end of the two. second quarter. The quarter went 34 minutes. We had a tremendous quarter. And at this stage, we have Ararat on 14 goals for 88 to Horsham, 7 goals, 9, 51. Just a reminder to the uh, delegates. The goal kickers. The goal the kickers are half time for Ararat. We have Chris Gold on the flank. Gary Todd, you two. Marion Guinness, one. Alistair Williamson, three. Bruce Valance, one. Michael Hosking one, Greg Kerr three, a very damaging player in that quarter, David Jennings one, Hank Owen one. For Horsham we have Peter Hickmott with two, Grant Kemp we have one, Andrew Mapleson one, Peter Wallen has got two, and Stephen Smith has got one. Tremendous quarter of Wimmer League football, and as we see the scoreboard showing there, 14-4 to 7-9 at half time of Wimmer League. Only two scoring shots a bit. Number 66. Please bring that ticket to the grandstand at the publican's booth to pick up your prize. And repeating, we have three results now from the basketball stadium. The under 14, the premiership, was won by Million. The under 16 is by Horsham. A B grade by Warwick Nabil. Back at Anzac Park, Warwick Nabil for the uh, second half of this uh, very important game. And the game. final match uh, of the stadium, the, the uh, game between Ararat and the senior grand Horsham. final between Ararat and Horsham. Repeating those scores at half time. At half time, we see Ararat with a commanding I'm lead. Sure 14 goals, tonight. 4, 88, leading Horsham, 7 goals, 9, 51. Interesting, uh, here we have a look at this stage that uh, there's only two scoring shots in it. That we surprised a bit of people at half time. Check your Ararat have only had two more scoring shots than, uh, uh, than Horsham. Yeah, Ararat kicked eight goals Number straight that quarter. The Horshams, the what they did, they kicked six goals, mind. five. So it was, uh, you know, it's interesting. The, the straight kicking is what's put them in front of this stage. Two stats from the first quarter quarter are very interesting to have a look at the handballs in that first quarter when uh, Ararat was so dominant they were 6-4 to 1-5 at uh, quarter time they had 30 handballs to 13 and Horsham certainly came back in the second quarter they've made a game of it and the uh, the handballs were pretty even 29 to 32 so Ararat leading in the handball situation at this stage uh, what about uh, free kicks here well in the free kick department we've seen Horsham receive three that quarter to Ararat's four and as we said during the game that the uh, VFL umpires tend to let the game flow and call for play on it all, all times and very reluctant to give free kicks or even bounce the ball. And so we've only seen what for the for the game we've seen six free kicks to Horsham to our at seven. So that's only 13 free kicks for the whole half. Can I just tremendous get, effort. Uh, Peter, can you uh, see our at getting back into, uh, rather Horsham? Can you see Horsham getting back into the game at this stage? At this stage, Mike, um, I can't. I know, looking at the handballs there, they had a number last quarter, but uh, I think our at general uh, ground work, they've got the good tall players, they've got the good running players, and I think they've just got a little bit uh, more skillful than, than Horsham. Um, I don't think they can come back, no. Huey, what's the difference in the two sides? Well, the difference in the two sides is I think our has got a more effective forward line. Horsham are just a little bit undermanned. They've, you know, they're getting good use from Beaver Wallam and up the ground, but... The thing is that when he has to go on the ball, he's going to the game. They lack anyone up the ground for the second half. To prepare half of their opportunity. Stephen final. Smith has looked dangerous. Peter Hickman has looked dangerous. But apart from that, they haven't had anyone to really look forward to up the ground. Our ad, as we said, have got nine goals for kickers at this stage. And yeah, we've got Alistair Williamson, Williamson's kick three and Greg Kerr's kick three. And that Kerr quarter, Greg Kerr was a very, very damaging player. He got out on his own. And as we've commented, we don't know really who's supposed to be picking him up, but he's notorious to get out on his own. And if Arrow are playing well, he'll finish off all the good work. But he can be very, you know, as we say, when he's playing on his own, he can be very loose at times. But when Arrow are winning the ball the way they are, he's capitalising on the good work. Having a look at the Horsham bench, uh, it's interesting to see Rod, Dem Rod Dummersney and uh, Grant Kemp coming onto the bench. Here we will get you to have a look around in the first couple of minutes of uh, this quarter to see if there's been any changes made by uh, both sides. It's interesting to see Beaver Wallman lining up at full forward for Horsham. Uh, Pelican, John O'Callaghan's there at centre-half forward. Graham Wyatt at centre-half back and uh, Cal Duncan will line up at full back. So their goal-to-goal -goal line looks as though it's pretty uh, similar. What about Ararat? Can they have any moves? Like they've gone back the way they started the game with Chris Dalton at centre-half forward. Gary Todd at full forward, is it? Yeah, Toddy's back at full forward. Murray McGinnis on the half-forward flank. And I don't know whether Greg Kerr's on the half forward flank of the Yes, he is. He's being, well, he's being picked up by Jason Merlot, so yeah, uh, it looks he appears like, he's uh, in the pocket. Bruce Valance has come right down from the forward pocket. Forward pocket Ruckman is playing right up in front of Greg Kerr, so there's given plenty of room for, for Gary Todd to lead up. And the way the ball's been passed to him from Jennings, Michael Hosking and Spalding, 
they need that room. OK, all's in readiness to get underway. The umpire bounces the ball. It's Thompson and Hobbs. Woodsy goes for the knock uh, in there against Young Hosking. And it's, uh, it's Robert Wood in there for the ball. Handballed quickly out by an Ararat player. He gets it out in front of here. It's David Bone. He's pushing the ball down in front of you. Appears to have gone to the halfback flank, perhaps. Gets the ball down on the ground. Woodsy gets it out. Here's Peter Light. He takes control of the ball. Swings it around looking for Beaver Wallerman. He's put himself in front. Makes good position. Picked up by Stewie Coombe. Handballs across to O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan's got the run of the ball, but good defensive play by Stuart McInnes of Ararat, puts the ball under the ground and puts Horsham under a lot of pressure. The ball's in no man's line. Peter Lowe, he's fighting for the ball. Young Hosking it is there. Oh, it's real scrambly play at this stage. And the umpire will have to ball it up at centre-half forward for Horsham early uh, a minute or so into this third quarter. Premiership quarter this one. Thompson going for the luck. Uh, the Horsham ruck and Wallerman come right down from the ground. Picked up by Robert Wood. He handballs out in front of him. John O'Callaghan's got the chance to put it on the boot. He's pretty slow at getting it around there. That's an Ararat player playing good defence. Barl, I think it is. Uh, he put the ball out, but it's well smothered by Stuart Kirk. Oh, good attacking play by Ararat. Uh, the wingman there, Jennings, he's been a good player. He handballs it out, and the ball's gone out of bounds right in front of us here. Uh, Summers and uh, Pelican battling for the ball. They've got to get back on top of Jennings, don't they? Yes, Jennings has been, they've been very damaging for us at uh, Horsham. Right, Ararat. the ball's back in play, and down it goes. Nobody gets the knock. Ararat come in and lay right over the top of a Horsham player, and now Pius says, give it to me, fellas. We'll bounce it once again. Not getting too many free kicks. We've really got to earn them today. Down it goes. Thompson and Wallerman. Wallerman's in front. Somebody just dropped all their lollies and all their money. Woodsy gets the ball. Pimplewood puts it on the liquid. Well smothered by Brett Dolphin. He gets it down, but Woodsy butters up well. He swings it around there looking for uh, Greg Wicks is in front. But a good mark. O'Callaghan over the top. He's put it down on the ground to Phil Creek. Phil goes out wide and it's uh, Stuart Coombe. It's good pressure football by Ararat and they come out of defence. A good handball across there to number nine and that's uh, Tony Birrell. He puts the ball across towards centre half forward. Dolphin gets in front, but Moyle takes a good strong mark from behind and Graham Moyle relieving for Horsham at centre half back. He drives the ball long up towards centre half forward. Up there in uh, front of the pack is a Horsham player, Hickmott. Roving beautifully on the ground, looks like Mapleton to me. He's ridden into the ground by his Ararat opponent, and the umpire will come in and ball it up just on Horsham's attacking side of the uh, centre of the ground. A couple of minutes into this first uh, third quarter, and nobody yet scored. The Horsham runner on the ground already. Umpire bounces the ball. Thompson and Wallerman. Thompson gets the ball down the ground. He finds his rover Birrell. Good uh, play by Horsham. Number 18, Greg Wicks. He puts it out. Birrell in a fair bit of trouble. Gets it across to Dolphin. He's quick with the handball. Gets it out to another Ararat player who comes across. And it's, uh, here he is. It's at number 11. Jennings again. Puts it on the left foot. Looking down there for Todd. Duncan in good position. He's prepared to punch the ball away. The ball's on the ground. Peter Light coming in towards it. He's running at the ball and he'll finish up with it. Makes good position. Handball's over the top to Bone. Bone is pretty slow to get to the ball. But the bounce will get up for him. He paddles it in front of him. His immediate opponent, Jennings. And Jennings takes it over the boundary and out of bounds. OK, the ball out of bounds on Ararat's half-forward flank. Oh, he's going to play the free kick. free kick. And that will be Birrell to take the free kick. He's looking at the centre of the game. The umpire's now called play on. And he kicks the ball long. A nice long torpedo pump kick right into the goal square. And there we go. The ball broken free. You saw the big announcement in the background there. The netball one from Ararat. The Blue Raiders has we've got the ball in Ararat's forward pocket. Number 34 from Ararat has a shot for goal. He's offline, and it's one point. And the player Craig Kemp back on the ground, Peter Stewart Coombe off. Right. The player to kick that point, of course, was uh, Greg Kerr. Kel Duncan at full back to bring the ball back into play. He comes the to the grandstand side. Peter Light leads in the race for the ball. He's up, and he takes a mark on the halfback flank grandstand side. Transfers plane to the centre where he finds Yogi Kemp all alone. Yogi now moves the ball to the half forward line. Peter Hickmott up there. In front, Brett Dalton grabs the ball off the pack. Peter Woods there. That's yeah. in front. Stuart McGinnis quickly plays on to Beryl. Beryl with a bungle looking at the Jennings kick. at his peak. Jennings, I'm sorry. Jennings now. The ball breaks free. Arats forward line number 24. Williamson has a shot for goal. He's off line again and the ball through for one point. Taking Arats to 14 goals. Six, 90 points to seven goals, nine. Portion don't seem to have any confidence in each other at this stage, Peter. They're all running at the ball. They're not talking much. They're not anticipating at all. Well, and I think they're really down on confidence. They're even now looking for Peter Light to do most of the big work. Just hold hopes. Over the top of the pack, the umpire calls play on. The ball kicked towards centre half forward. Hank Owen with the ball runs into an open goal and he'll put this one through. No, he's missed it. Off line again. Three points. In the past couple of minutes for our outside, and did they, uh, they, they get those goals? You would really stand them in good They're stead, really strong, hard running through there by Hank Owen, and he should have finished it off with a goal. We'll see 
We've got another full back kick there. Kel Duncan's going to kick out, and that's what it should be. Moore should be out there going for marks, giving him more avenue to Cole Thompson's robed it like a little fella there. He's thrown his mark raised, it's on his left foot. Down in front of Greg Wicks, who's back on the ground. And Tony Burrell's wearing him like a shirt. Wicks giving away a free kick, no, it's cool, play on. Tapped it out in front of Peter, Ly uh, Peter Hickmont. And Darren Bales kicked it Please down the ground. Tickets, Looks like it's going to go out of bounds. No, it's still in play with Jason Miller leading hard of the ball. Taking the, the ball over the line of bounds. He had two players to give it to there, but he was really lacking in confidence in each other and he took it out, the defensive type of play. Not attacking the game at all. The ball on Ararat's half forward line. It comes over the back of the pack. Moyle picks it up. He heads forward now, looking for a big long kick from him. It's a short kick and Michael Hosking's in the van here. He taps the ball in front of him, gathers it well, running around the outer side of the ground and a nice kick into centre half forward. And there we see Moyle coming again. Moyle kicks the ball out in front. Chris Dolphin picks it up, trying to weave the way through the pack. Can't do so. Peter White picks the ball up. He hits, hits the goal now with a left foot kick down to the centre half forward position. Hit the van there is Peter Hickmont. Hickmont takes the mark. He tries to step out on his own, number 12. That. Step, kicks it across goal. And now he would be a fair distance out from goal. That's He's further out than Hickmont was, Peter. He won't kick that. Back to Hickmont. No, they've messed it up. Horsham messing around with the ball on the forward line. And the Ararat defender, that one there, you gets the quick handball out to Brett Dolkin. Dolkin now steams downfield. Sees Kerr on the wing. On his own again. On. He'll look for Chris Dolgan. No, he goes over the top with a nice handball to McGuinness. McGuinness now oh. follows it up. Tops one around the head. Chris Dolgan picks it up. The umpire's call. It gets around the neck to Chris Dolgan. And Dolgan will take a free kick around about the half forward flank position and within kicking distance. Huey's uh, should kick this one. I said that before. But well, this is his third time uh, that he should be able to kick this one, surely. True magpie fashion. He'll put it right through the middle, you fellas. You have a hey, listen. Hey, Mike, who do you go for in this game? Oh, and he went a bit of an argument with you fellas. You turn against the locals every week here, blokes. Dolkin now over the ball. Comes in right. Beautiful. Kick and he's threaded it straight through that centre there. And Dolkin now just gives Yogi kept something to go on with. And the boys come in, Graham Moyle. And a few oh, she's a on, is she? A, a box on here at centre half. Foyle, Moyle, Kemp and also Crick Dolkin involved. But I think uh, our at best advice to uh, just take it steady. They're going along nicely at the moment. And they have a commanding lead in the third term of this grand Very final. Very interesting, two umpires. Park. They're uh, speaking strongly to who, Peter? Yogi Kemp, is it? Yes, Yogi Kemp and gave no uh, books. Chris Dolgan a bit of uh, bit of curry there. Didn't go for the sock, no. Okay, well, Horsham perhaps trying to put a little bit of spirit into this game and liven things up a bit. Ararat certainly, uh, they're going the way that they want to and they don't want to get conned into any of the, of the rough a, stuff. That's the first goal we've had this quarter. Different of the second quarter, we've taken nearly eight minutes to score the first goal of the third quarter. Right, the umpire's back in the centre of the ground. It's Hobbs against Thompson. Mm. These two have done most of the ruck work in the centre and I think they've broken fairly even. Beautiful bounce of the ball. Up it goes. They've nullified each other, but Thompson it is, gets towards goal. It's Hosking. Fakes it through there and on his left foot, uh, Chris Dolkin. He's beautifully put it down over the top. It's uh, taken by Toddy. In he goes and pops it through. And that's number three on the 99. Are we going to get to, are we going to get the ground invaded by people if he kicks his 100 today? Well, all the Arrow supporters are down there where Toddy's about to kick his 100th goal. But that was Chris Dolkin and Michael Hosking and those damaging players again. I think they, they might have stirred uh, Chris Dolkin up. I think that might have been a bad move of Yogi Kemp there. Well, they certainly do look the goods at this stage, Ararat. They're leading well. 16 goals, 7 to a fairly uh, sorry side, Horsham 7-9. And if they go down, this will be three years in a row that they've been the bridesmaids. Yes, and that should drive them on this quarter. If they're going to get up, they've got to get up this quarter. Mark right. Graves in the ruck against Cole Thompson. Cole Thompson's rucking very well. Here goes Hank going, the danger man of the first quarter. He's come back into the game of the third quarter, drives it long down in the fourth puppet. Jason Merlo's got the set. He's got his eyes on the ball and a great mark. He had his eyes on it all the way. Standing on the mark is Gary Todd. And if he hadn't got much to kick to, Peter Lodge at the back. Mark Rose in front. Punched away by Hank going across to Michael Spalding. And there's Peter Lodge, taps it on the Pipplewood, but uh, Stuart McGuinness is in front and he'll roll the ball over the band line. You'd a lot said at this time after the game, but uh, what would you do at this stage? Horsham well down. What do you think they have to do to get up? Well, I'd put, uh, from start, I'd put Graham Moore to centre forward. I think they've got to get a bit more attacking power up the forward line, and Moore's that bloke that could do it. I'd like to see Stephen Hobbs in the forward line too, Huey. Well, I don't know. I don't think he's got enough, uh, well, they say mongrel in him, as the saying goes, but yeah, Moore could do anything. And Peter Light there, Peter Hickmont there, dropped another one that he should have taken. And David Bones comes through strong. And we were a good, strong, hard hit by Tony Burrell there. Balance has come over the top of a good, strong mark by Peter Hickman. Put These are at really players, well. uh, they, they lose the mark. They're quick to get on and defend, aren't they? They don't stop for one moment. He's got a, a pretty no good running combination. players at this stage. 
see, I don't know who they're going to kick it to up here. If it's not Beaver Wallerman who's going to get the ball, they don't look as like they've got much. Grant Kemp's doesn't look like he's making much position. Peter Lyons back, uh, Peter wants back himself to kick a goal here. It'll curl around, it'll drop short. Red dot on the back, great mark by Johnny O'Kelly. He's come across the front of the pack. Oh, the umpire's taking him around a bit. This will be a testing one for an old backline player in Johnny O'Kelly. The umpire says go around further, son. Will he kick it with his left foot? Will he do a banana kick? I don't really know what he's doing. Oh, just an ordinary one straight through the middle, Huey. Oh, I don't know. He's got to kick this one if Horsham is going to have any show. Oh, he's just taken a couple of steps. He's hit the post. Did you see that, Peter? Did that hit the top of the post and knock the top off or not? What if it had stayed there? What would the decision be? Come on, Lou. Let's get back to the game. Well, been a miracle. Dolkin That's picks right. the ball out. Goes well down the ground. Peter Hickmott at the back. Two grabs. Uh, Chris Dolkin in there. He whips the handball out quickly to an Ararat player there. And that's number 23, who is Summers. And he drives the ball well down and out of bounds on the full. Not a lot of pressure on him. He had to kick on his left foot. And the free kick goes to young David Bone. Bone will come across the ground. He comes straight up the wing. Looking this time for Yogi Temple. It's Hickmott over the back. And good experience play. He takes the mark. We just inside the, the boundary is. line. The and the is will play that one. Peter Hickmott it is, who's coming into the game. Horsham forward line moving a little bit more at this stage. Hickmott it is, drives the ball in across the centre half forward. Looking for John O'Kelly, and he's at the back, palms the door down beautifully towards Kemp. If he's quick enough, but he's not. Birrell's in there, pushing and shoving. Ararat defence is very, very tight. They put it out in front. Here's Pimple Wood, but it's screwed around by Stephen Smith. Oh, That's a, a Mickey goal. Conlon shot, if ever I've seen one. Yes, Screws it around. Not Stephen much Smith. noise from the crowd. The Horsham no, crowd are dead a, quiet, aren't the they? Fellas, not too many not a thing. They should be really revving him up. He's kicked a beautiful goal there, Stephen Smith. And how many is that? He's kicked, uh, that's his second for the game. Kicked one in the first quarter. And Horsham come on a little bit in closer the second to our quarter, He kicked a part. What are you it was in the second, about? was it? I thought it was in yeah. the first. It's a long time ago here. Peter, it. Peter Hickmont's given a little bit across the half forward line, but they're really lacking someone who can really finish off their work coming down the ground. Okay, Mark Graves is uh, on the ball. He'll uh, go for the knock against Cole Thompson, who's done a tower of work. Peter Light also in the centre there for Horsham. Mapleson, Stuart McInnes from Ararat. Down it goes. These umpires have bounced the ball beautifully in the centre of the ground. Nullify each other. Peter Light comes down with it. He drives it quickly down towards full forward, but it's Ararat players in front. Good strong play there by Valens. Rebounds to the ground to Kemp. Kemp will screw it round. Gives himself a little bit of time. Has a look for goal, but he kicked it out of bounds. And a fairly disappointing shot there. He had time to go on with it, and it's out of bounds. Deep in the attacking zone for Horsham. Out of bounds, as Mike said. In the attacking zone for Horsham. Boundary umpire coming in to throw it in, and see Horsham need another go. 12 minutes into this third term at Anzac Park, Warwick Nabil, the boundary umpire throws it in. Wallerman there tapping the ball down, picked up by Hickmott, he's grabbed, and the umpire says, I'll have it, fellas, and he'll bounce it directly in front of Horsham's goal. Peter Hickmott's really trying his heart out this quarter, and if some of the Horsham fellas took a leap out of his book, they might get back into this game, but I don't think so. Bounce he goes, Thompson and Wallerman. Thompson, no one wins it, clearly. The ball, Tony Birrell there, hit out, oh, hand yeah. passed over towards... Summers, Summers, Summers taps it off the ground. Here we go, Pimple Wood in the race for the ball. Both players, eyes on it. Goes through to Bone. Bone now onto his left foot, hitting towards centre half forward. Wicks. Wicks is out there on his own. No, over the back, Owen. No, Owen can't no, take no. it. Mark Cunningham gets the ball. Hand pass up here, Ararat go now. Folding with the ball along the centre line. Kicks the ball to the half forward flank, and out there we've got Kerr. But no, Big Hobbs comes in and takes the mark, and he'll stem the attack from the Ararat side. The half-back flank, 103 to 58 at this stage. Hobbs takes the ball out to the centre wing position. Owen flies there with Graves, and the umpire's pulled it out. He said, that's your mark. Hank Owen, he goes back, says he's going to kick it long. He doesn't, in fact, do that. He finds a man out there Alistair loose Williamson. on the half-forward flank. It's Alistair Williamson. Williamson will go back with Michael Hosky making a lead to the pocket. They'll be looking for Gary Todd. He needs his 100, but he's a big thump away by Moyle. Stuart McGuinness. Stuart McGuinness paddling the ball in front of him at half centre half forward. Peter Light in there, gets it out to Big Hobbs. Hobbs now goes this way, then gets caught. A short kick out towards the boundary line. People would going for the ball. But it'll beat him over the line and out of bounds for a throw in. In that situation, Narrow would have had a fellow running down the outside and got a handball at him. Hobbs, all he could do was go for the boundary line. Very defensive play, and that's the way they've been playing all day. Valence Bruce Valence is in front and got the ball, has been roved hard by Peter Light or Andrew Williamson. Play on the umpire is called play the advantage to Peter Light. And he looks for Johnny O'Kelling and he missed what he should have taken. Peter Light goes through hard, tackled high. And Peter, Peter Hickmont. Hickmont, I'm sorry, Peter Hickmont's taken a uh, uh, free kick at the true centre half forward position. He's looking for a short one. Oh, it's a very short one to Robbie Wood. Probably his first kick for the match. 
very disappointing game. I suppose he's carrying a bit of an injury with that left knee. But I don't think he'll fit the distance. He's looking for a short. No, Mark he's... Graves over here on his own. Mark Graves. No, he's going to have a shot for goal. It's a nice kick. Will it make the distance? I think it will. Yes, I reckon it's a goal. Great yes. goal by Robert Wood. A tremendous kick. I didn't think he'd kick that distance, but a tremendous effort. But there's not much enthusiasm created by that goal, and that's disappointing from the Horsham point of view. It was a tremendous goal from Robert Wood. Okay, 16-7 or 103 plays 58 Horsham at this stage. So that might be 64 Horsham and at uh, Ararat playing well. Horsham sl slowly coming back, but uh, they've got a big job ahead of them. In the centre of the ground for Horsham, we've got Graves for Ararat and Balance. 15 minute mark at the third term in the 86 grand final and Anzac Park Warwick Field. Down goes the ball, another excellent bounce. Balance and Graves. Graves wins the second grab towards Pimple Wood. He can't oh. get it. Ball is in there battling hard. The umpire said you had a chance to get rid of it. A little bit red hot, I thought. But he's played it by 39 points. And they'll take the kick from the centre of the ground. As he goes now out wide to Peter Light. Light takes the mark and he says, I'll take it here. Mark Cunningham on the mark. He goes back right. Sees a lead now coming from O'Callaghan. But it's short and balanced there. That was a poor kick. The horse is not going direct enough, I don't think. Balanced now towards Moyle and Dolphin. No one can take the mark. Brown gets the ball. He's tackled and loses possession. Hurt. Picked up by Kerr. Kerr now looking for Todd. Oh, this could be his hundred. He's got his market. 30 metres out. Directly. directly in front. And he's on 99 goals for the season. And this will be a great performance if he can kick 100 goals in the 1986 grand final. Beautiful pass there by Kerr. He goes back. The umpire doesn't move. And there it is. A goal to Gary Todd. 100 goals for the season. A great performance by him, and my word, the Ararat club at the moment, going on with it and showing Horsham how to win the grand final. Nobody on the ground, I thought that would come from everywhere, Pete. You predicted that, didn't I you? I thought there'd be a few people there, but uh, all the players going out and congratulating no, uh, Toddy, well, I'm, well, I'm I sure was, they would have realised it. Well, I was interested that there weren't a lot of players, Peter, and I think that obviously that the important thing for Ararat Someone is a grand there final. There we are. We've got someone down the goal square now giving oh, Toddy well, a well done. congratulations. Oh, yep. <laughs> the important thing is the grand final, and that's what it's all about. Oh, he's a trainer. He's out there. He's got a red towel. He's come over the fence with a red towel. <laughs> OK, back in the centre of the ground. 17-7, 9-10. Tararat all the way at this stage. Down goes the ball. Valance against Graves. Up they go. Valance gets the knock. It goes down to his uh, player. Wicks. There's Wixie. Wixie gets the ball onto his right boot. Screws it around towards Kemp and Summers. There it is. Oh, he's done well, 23. That's Summers. Comes out with the ball and puts it down. But it's David Bone, who's working pretty hard on the wing, across to Robbie Wood. Robbie Wood will look in there. He swings it around towards Peter Hickmott, who's made good position. Oh, oh good mark. The mark up yeah, good mark. Two or three attempts to take that grab. And he takes it deep in the forward pocket for Horsham. Yeah, Come into the game in this quarter, I think. He didn't do a lot early, but uh, he, uh, for a guy of his experience and his age, he's working very, very well. He'll have you a think shot he'll here. Kick this from here, Mick? One, one Horsham player in the square to four. I don't know whether he'll... Uh, well, he's screwed it off the boot. Uh, it's right in there, but it'll be hit oh. the post. Looked like it was going to be well out for a minute, but it's come back, and that's uh, twice in about three minutes that Horsham have hit the post. Yes, they've just hit the post in the, the last twice now. It is. Neil Valance kicks it out. Which looking for no, Stewie McGinnis, the centre man. Great mark. Peter Lyon hit it fairly hard, but it's a great mark by Stewie McGinnis. That should never have happened yet. He's got a time to pick him up and let him get on his own. He's looking down there for Heck Owen and Mick Spalding. Michael Spalding's tapped it on. Great tap on him, Chris. Christopher is looking long down to Cole Thompson, the big fellow, Michael Hoskin at the back, and Grant Ke uh, Craig Kemp, Yogi Kemp's going to take it on the band line, handballs it over to David Bone, oh, it's dangerous play, uh, Hobbs oh, handballs oh, it into the centre of the ground, and Toddy's on his own, thank you very much, across to Michael Hoskin, well, bunny hooks it across, oh. oh, that's not a good bit of play, and he's kicked it out of bounds on the fall, no, it's rolled across the line, normally Michael Hoskin would wrap that up and put it through the middle at any stage of the game. Hobbs has been a good player for Horsham. He's done a lot of work across that half-back line. Hobbs it is, and Thompson deep in defence for Horsham. Hobbs in front. He makes good position. Puts it down to Pipplewood. He gets it out in front of him. There's Jason, Jason Merlo. Overruns the ball. Hobbs backs up well. Wicks. Picks it up and handballs across to Greg Wicks. He's handballed over the top to nobody in Michael particular. Spalding. It's an Ararat player, Spalding. That pacing winger down there. Good play there. Uh, plenty of hard tackling from players coming at each other. Ooh, and it's Ararat Williamson boring in. He's been a danger player for Ararat. Backed up by Peter Light. He handballs across to Moyle. Moyle's well smothered by McGinnis. Again. He hits across to Toddy. Screams around on the oh, left McGinnis. foot. And he's found his man. It's McGinnis. Graham McGuinness, here he is out there. Yeah, Murray McGuinness. Murray McGuinness, 15. Isn't it surprising how 
normally Horsham fellas really look for players. At this stage, they're just putting the ball on the boot, banging it down the ground where the arrow plays. Every time they get the ball, they eyes up and look for someone to kick it to. Well, I think the difference is that they're out of that yard, quicker to the ball, and they're running quicker, and Horsham are under pressure all the time. He's put it through? Yeah, straight through right the through middle for his, his second goal. A tremendous effort. Gary Todd come right up the ground, use his left foot, put it out in front of a fellow. They're not worried about who's going to kick the goal. They just want to put him on the score for the Ararat Football Club. I think the real difference is that, uh, that Ararat are running, Horsham are under pressure all the time, aren't they? Every yep. time they, uh, they get control of the ball, they're under pressure. Moyle coming down the ground. Moyle, they switched them again. Moyle to centre-half forward, O'Callaghan to centre-half back. I don't know, I suppose they've got to put a little bit of life into their half-forward line. I would bring Stephen Wallerman onto the ball. I'd give him a, a bit of a run. I think he's got a bit of fire. That might okay, be up there's the ball in the centre. Graves and Valance. Graves does well. He gets it down. Peter Light. He's tackled well by his Ararat opponent. Scrambly play in the centre of the ground right on the cricket pitch. Handballed out by Horsham, but good strong play oh, by Val. He gets it out there. Peter Light swings around. Handballs across to Hickmont. Onto his left foot. He puts it down to centre half forward. Horsham players muck each other up, but good strong play by number 13 Bale. coming out of defence. Darren Bale. Darren Bale from the back pocket. He puts the ball high in the air and a Phil good Creek. grab by Phil Creek. Hasn't done a lot. Puts it across to his coach Peter Light. He screws it around. It's going to come out here into no Michael, man's land Michael and it's young Michael Hosking. He's too quick for his Horsham opponent. Runs around. Play on says the umpire. Leorising a little bit here our rat and they go straight across Tony the ground. Tony Beryl's got it. He drives it long. He down drives it long. Down Rick the centre half there forward. Set. Oh, oh yes. Oh too easy. Too easy. That was a 70 metre torpedo punt and Kerr at the back of the pack kept his eyes on the ball and he's got an opportunity to kick his what? Must well, he was running, with the, flight of, running with the flight of the ball, and he's ever dangerous down there. Two or three yards in front of Jason Merlo, and uh, he should kick this one. And this will really just about wrap it up, even though it is only about 20 minutes into the third quarter. Right yes. through the middle. That's another goal. That's his fourth goal. At this stage, at the 21 and a half minute mark, we see the score. Horsham, nine goals, 11.65 to Ararat. What are they? What are they? 18. We see the score. 18 goals, seven. 19, is it? With 19 goals, seven. So, so Peter's right nearly again. 10 goals. You can't, 50, you can't pick a winner, let alone beat the scoreboard. 56 points up, fellas. Okay. <laughs> you blokes transfer to our rat next week, eh? Yep, you? I'm going down there Monday. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you better stay, I think. <laughs> okay, the ball back in the centre, and our rat doing well at the moment in the third term of the 86 grand final. Balance gets a knockout down to Wicks. He can't get it clear. Balance picks the ball up again, and the umpire says it's held to him. I'll have another bounce, fellas. Peter Light must be wondering, what can I do? What can I do to get this Horsham side back into it? I don't think you can do much, Lighty. I think you're outplayed on the day. The ball will be put down again. Balance and Graves. Balance with the run in. Hosking right, takes Hosking. the ball. Runs back into the centre of the ground. Shoots a hand pass out. Wicks comes through. Picks the ball up cleverly with a hand pass over to Moyle. Moyle now with a bit of room to spare. That's Shoots a hand that. pass that out to Peter Light. Light should look for the goal. He does. And I think he's found home. He has. There was a first bit of constructive football we've seen from Horsham all day. A good handball by Greg Wicks to Graham Moyle. And Graham Moyle picked out Peter Light coming down the ground. And he had a chance to look under no pressure at that stage. You talked about the pressure early in the game, Mick, and he had no pressure then. He was able to finish off with a good goal. You're a bit critical. First bit of constructive play all day. Well, you know, everything Horsham done, I think, has been under pressure. You know, we've got the half-back line in blokes like uh, Tony Burrell and Craig Summers are really... Hammering those blokes across the half-back line and making it hard. OK, here we go again. Back in the centre. Horsham a bit to do to catch up. Balance and Graves. A bit of a no, one-all there, I think. No one got the decisive tap out. The ball in the centre of the ground. Number of players going in trying to get it. Hickmott eventually does. Handball's over to try to Robbie Wood. Hickmott again backing up. Phone grabs the ball. Oh, Arara, race race by Tony Bill. He'll run down the ground and uses his ball left foot. It's a poor kick. It's the Todd's poor in kick. front. Toddy's in front. He grabs the ball now. A missed hand, handball there. Comes back in the back pocket. Oh, he couldn't get rid of it quick enough. And David Jennings just stepped through the pack. Goes on his natural left foot. Drives it right down and there's a chance here. Go over the back and hit the post. And the ball's gone through off the pack for one point. OK. Waiting for the ball to come back into play. Golden with a limping down there. Leaning against the goal post. Jason Merlo kicks out from fullback. That's about the fifth fullback we've used all day. Mark Rose in front. No, he dropped what he should have taken. Kicked on by Philip Creek down the wing. And Pepperwood leads for the race of the ball against uh, Darren Bale. Bale's got it. Here we go again. Greg, Greg, uh, Greg Wicks, is it? No, Stephen Smith driven down to Wicks here. Wicks goes Here's through. Go. Good shepherded by Graham Moore. Wicks should finish it off with a goal, and looks like he has. No. It's gone across. Oh, yes, it is a goal. Great shepherding by 
by uh, Graham Wall and a great goal by Greg Rich. Can they get back, Peter? I don't know. I don't think so. But gee, when they move that ball and those last two passages of play have resulted in goals for Horsham, that's what they've got to do, isn't it, Hugh? Just run the ball, play on handball all the time. And, uh, well, you never know. They may get back into it. But one hundred. doesn't seem to be much light coming from the Horsham fellas, even though they've got another quarter. We're only 20, just on 25-minute mark of this quarter, and it doesn't seem to be a lot of life from the Horsham fellas. No, grand finals, funny things have happened. They're well down, but they may be able to get back in it. This is Arrow's first grand final since 75, and they really look like they're going to take it home. But anything can happen at this stage. We've got in the ruck, Bruce Fellens against Stephen Hobbs. Stephen Hobbs gets up high, but Fellens, and then through comes Andrew Mavis on strong across to Pimple Wood, and he takes him up. He's grabbed hold of by Darren Barley. He won't let him go. All the fellas run down into the forward line, and it's pretty hard to kick, pick out a fella there. And Beaver Wallerman push him in the back, and he's got his hands on the ball. Well, but hit out by Summers across to Robbie Wood. Robbie Wood handballs it, smothered by Greg Kerr. In comes Andrew Mapleson, strong, looks for a handball across the to Peter White. He's under a lot of pressure here. What can he do? He can't get his handball out. Stephen Smith's got his hands on the ball. He steps it across to Peter Light. He's under the hammer again. Bang! Down he goes with the kick. Moore's pushed a player out, and it's been touched, I'd say, and it's gone through for one point. OK, 11 goals, 12, 78. Horsham are at 19 goals, 8, 122. As the ball comes back into play, goes favours the outer side of the ground. Up they go, and a good mark to Phil Creek. Creek now looking into the centre, and he's got Mapleson there, and he takes the mark. Mapleson about 45 to 50 metres out from goal. Then kicking distance, I think, and uh, Horsham, hopefully that he can put one on the board for the Horsham side. Wallerman in the goal square. Mapleson's kick, it will drop a little bit short. Wallerman in front, over oh, the top Moyle. goes Moyle, and the ball's gone through for a goal. Another goal to Horsham, that makes Ooh. him 12 goals, 12, 84, and uh, it must have been a free kick there by Moore, was it? But looks like he's brought down the pack there, and uh, at this stage he's hurt himself, has he? Yeah, well, there's been five goals scored by both clubs this quarter. Get on, you man! The crowd, Arrow supporters, are crying for the Arrow fellas to pick up them, and they don't want to see him relax and give this game back to Horsham, because that's what it would have to be at this stage. Bruce Ballant's in the ruck against Stephen Hobbs. The ball goes towards Stephen Hobbs. The balance comes in hard, taps it forward. Andrew Mapleson has got it. And Stephen Smith drives it down the ground. Grant Kemp, can he mark it? He's got one, two, three grabs. They're all close to being a mark. And by Greg Wiss comes through strong. Looks, fakes the handball and drives into Stephen Wallerman. He goes through hard. Mark uh, David Jennings kicks it on his right. No, it's uh, Neil Bellows kicks it on his right across to Brett Dobbins. Moyle coming off quiet. the ground here. He's hurt himself in that 10-yard well, sweep. Uh, Alistair Wilson plays on and he gets away with it. Drives it with his left foot down to Gary Todd, who's come right up the ground to centre forward. He's taken a mark, and he drives it down to Cole Thompson. No, Murray McGuinness is leading out. Michael Hoskins there, across to Murray McGuinness. Yogi Kemp's really fighting hard. Murray McGuinness leads for the ball. They seem to have a little bit more pace than the Horsham fellas. A handball across to Cole Thompson. Will he kick his first goal? Drives it through, and he did it easy. He did it with ease. Lovely bit of play by the uh, footballers, there, as we see. OK, interesting uh, move there. Moyle off the ground. Looks like he split his head, Huey, when he came over that uh, top of that pack and he's probably hit his head on the bottom of the goalpost, possibly. Well, he went and, up uh, very high and coming down uh, He split the top of his head, bleeding from there, but I think he'll be OK. He's walked off the ground unassisted and Rod Dummers and he's gone onto the ground. OK, it looks Stop all out right at this stage. Uh, Horsham players, race boots. High Stitches scoring game, Mike. Okay, calling for the doctor, uh, Dr. David Lembrugan to come to the players' race there. He's the uh, Horsham Club doctor. Back into the game here. It's on the ground. Hobbs has uh, got the knock. Peter Lodge tackled hard. Uh, Jason Merlo, he picks the ball up and it's a screwy old punt down towards Dummersney on the ground. He's uh, working pretty hard, but Brett Dolphin, the big number 50 in the long sleeves are out. It's probably there. about his 10th hand ball for the game. Gets it across to Beryl. Beryl to Jennings. Jennings will go on his natural left foot right down into that forward pocket area. It's the young fella. Hoskins on the ground along there with Yogi Kemp. Hoskins paddles it out in front. Handball beautifully out to Vals, who was standing still. Merlo backing up well. He's been a good player for Horsham. Merlo fights hard on the ground, handballs it out, gets it across to Graves. Graves swings it around, with bone in front, but over the back of the pack, Stephen Smith. Well rove there by 24 hours to Williamson, a danger player for uh, Ararat. Down towards Hank Owen, but well punched away by Mark Graves. He's out there to Phil Creek. Phil Creek's in front of the race for the ball, along with two Ararat players. Kerr's in there. It looks like oh, Kerr that's picked up the ball. It's Kerr it is. He swings it in. He'll put it towards the 10 yards there, and a good strong mark taken into pitch in the back pocket by Yogi Kemp. He comes straight across the ground. No, he doesn't. He turns and goes back out towards that halfback flank, looking for Stephen 
Hobbs gives his opponent a bit of a shove in the back, but the way they go, Robbie Wood up towards the centre, it's Beryl and, uh, and also Hickmott. Beryl takes the mark, plays on strongly, pours it down towards the full forward line. If it's over the top, it's a good 70 metre kick and a point there to Horsham Footy Club. I think that's coming Murray McGuinness coming off Murray the ground. Murray coming off the, the ground. Around the head. And David Hosking, it is going onto the ground there for our rat. Okay, the ball comes out here, punched away from uh, Peter Light by uh, Gary Todd. He's happy to see it go over there, and Ararat will re regroup deep in that half-forward line. Uh, of course, Toddy, of the member of the 1975 Ararat Premiership team, the only one. He was a mere baby at that stage. My word, about 18 or 19 years of age. The ball's thrown in, in the forward line for Ararat. Light grabs the ball, picked up by Todd. Todd with a handball over the top to Kerr. Kerr with oh, a snapshot to goal, and he's put it through, and that's top football by Ararat. And my word, they're oh. certainly playing well. And they that's look like going goal. on to earn the Premiership for 1986. Fifth goal to Kerr, Huey. Yeah, his fifth goal. He's kicked some miracle goals. He's been a very damaging player across the half-forward line. Always seems to be out in his own. Looks like Jason Merlo's picking him up at this stage. But Jason's tried very hard, but just hasn't had the, the talent that this place got. Always seems to be out in his own. And a very damaging player when he gets his hands on the ball. OK. Back in the centre. And these umpires have done a top job all day. 21 goals, 9 to Ararat. Horsham, 12-12. Ararat runner going out on the ground, end of their back line. The ball's put down on the turf. Another terrific bounce. Thompson and Hobbs. Hobbs goes. with the light-up. Stolen by Owen. Owen down to Todd at centre-half forward. I think I'd play that umpire. He certainly has. And yeah, they're always in front, the Ararat fellas. And this is what seems to be the difference in the two sides. They've got the pace and they're also playing in front and giving them first use of the ball. Toddy seems to be going to back himself it looks like here, Peter. Can, like the big torpedo punt, he's gone for it. I don't think he's quite got onto it. It's not a bad kick down into the forward line. Oh, Peter tremendous Light, I mark. Think, is it? No, Kel Duncan. Kel Duncan down there is taking the mark. Looks like he's been doing it easy at work, saving himself for this game. OK, the ball out in the half forward flank. Top mark by Johnny O'Callaghan. Johnny O'Callaghan takes that mark. Moves playing to the centre of the ground. Steve Wallerman moves up Looks the like field. Stephen Wallerman's come up the ground, is what I said early in the, early in the quarter. And a 15 yard penalty against Brett Dalkin. Professional free kick, says Tooney. Well, this is what they've got to do if they're going to get into the game is bring Stephen into the game. He's got a lot of fire. Out the back's Greg Wicks. Can he do some damage here? He's got a hard shot for goal. He's hooked it across too far. And it'll bounce and hit the post. Out of bounds in the forward pocket for the Horsham Football Club. We've been going 32 minutes. I don't think there will be much time to go in this game, Peter. That doesn't quarter, so. I should say. Hugh, the third term. And Ararat with a commanding lead. The ball deep in the forward pocket for Horsham. The ball thrown in. Thompson... And Kemp do battle. Ararat win the ball out. Thumped away there by that Ararat defender. It comes out to number 13 Summers. for the Ararat club is Summers. His no, kick Darren smothered. Bale, I should say. Darren Barlow, that was. Hank Owen, Owen gets the ball. Owen now driving play towards that centre wing position. Michael Spalding. And a good you, you watch the pace in this play. Off, off he goes. Like a race the ball and converts play down to the half forward line. Under it is, we've got O'Callaghan, who the umpire says play on. And yes. there's the, uh, the Foss Siren to end the third term here at Anzac Park, Warrigal. And we've got Ararat 21-9, 135 to Horsham 12-12, 84. And Horsham and Huey, I'd like to be in Ararat shoes at this point. Oh, yeah, I'd like to be in Ararat tonight. I think that quarter went 32 and a half minutes, Peter. And uh, we're gonna, I think they've got a few worries, Horsham. We've seen uh, Graham Moore just going off the ground with a split head. And uh, that'll be a big loss to the Horsham football club. Right, the start of the last quarter. And Mike Turn, you've got some interesting... Uh, Statistics there, handball-wise. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Uh, handballs uh, after three quarters. Ararat, 86 handballs to uh, the uh, Horsham side, 72, 86 and 72. Not a lot in that. Uh, a big break in the first quarter to Ararat. Uh, Marks, 47 to Ararat, 51 to Horsham. And it's pretty interesting that uh, the Horsham have had 21 more kicks than Ararat so far in this game. 167 uh, kicks to Horsham, 147 to uh, to Ararat. Very interesting the statistics yeah. at three quarter time in the grand final at Anzac Park. Right, Ararat 21-9, 135 to Horsham 12-12, 84. And, uh, Kel Duncan to centre half forward, Grant Kemp to full back. A couple of interesting ones here. Okay, Horsham need a big last quarter to get back into this grand final. They're down by a number of points at the moment as the umpire puts the ball down. We've got Thompson and Graves. Thompson stands his ground and gets the tap out. Through going heavily was Mabelson. They all pile on top of the ball. The umpire says that's mine, and uh, he's going to bounce the ball. Heavy performance by two umpires here today. Yogi came to a half forward flank. 
The ball down again. Thompson's done a great job in the ruck for Ararat all day. Ball comes out now to Hank Owen. Owen taps the ball in front of him, gains control. Tries to get it on the left boot, the kick's mother. It's in the centre of the ground, picked up by Graves. Graves with a kick down towards the forward line, leading for the race of the ball down there. He's balanced, for the, and Wicks comes through, snaps the ball up on the left boot, and it's gone through for one point, taking Horsham to 12 13 85. Power at 21 9, 135. The first minute of play in the last quarter of the 1986 Grand Final at Anzac Park, Warwick and Deal. Unfortunately, we've got any chance, Peter. They've got to get four or five in the Quick first one. five or six minutes. My word, get that game going. Number of players making a lead there. Going to the outer side of the ground. It's a short kick looking for, for Brett Dolgan. The umpire calls play on. Kicked off the ground by Graves. I think that is out there. David Jennings. David Jennings picked the ball up. He's a later terrific game. One of the left boot kicks the ball down. It was a centre wing position. Two players battling out there for over there. Here comes O'Callaghan, strong play by him, he goes forward. Ten and a half forward position and there it is Steve Wallman, I think that is on the ball, can't take the mark. The ball on the ground, number of players dive on, on the ball. Hank Allen in there, he's got possession, hand passes it out to oh, Brian Jennings, I think that is Jennings, Forks, Peter Wood. Ran onto his left foot once again, a nice long kick down towards Kerr. Kerr, yes he nearly had that one, the umpire calls play on. Picking up the ball is Bruce Collins. Binder, the ball's still on the ground. Put out there by the horse and defenders. Gary Todd comes in, can't take the ball. Wood with a hand pass out to Rod Dumsney. Dumsney with a hurry kick towards Peter Hickmont. Hickmont now coming across the half ball line. Can't get it. Hand pass over to Peter Wright. Wright goes goalward. He's tackled, he's caught from behind. Too long, Peter Wright. The ball falls to Hank Owen. Owen with a hand pass to Dalton. Dalton over again. No, the umpire said you threw that Brett Dalton. And that's a free kick to Robbie Wood of Horsham. The centre half forward position. Okay, Wood lining up uh, to have a shot. He'll put it deep down into attack for Horsham. Dolkin very quick with that handball, a little bit too quick that time, and the umpire says uh, that was throwing the ball. Robbie Wood puts the ball onto his right boot. He puts it right down into the 10 yard square. In fact, it's a beautiful kick for the yeah. ball. Right through the middle, a lovely kick there. Two Ararat players uh, jumping in the air, but uh, they weren't quite up to that one, and uh, Robbie Wood scores his second goal for the game to make Horsham a little bit more respectable. Ararat 21-9 at this stage. To Horsham, that'll be up to 12 now, fellas. 12 goals, no, 13. 13, 13, 13, 13 21-9. Looks yeah, like Ararat's uh, game at seven this stage, but uh, two minutes into the final quarter. That's Robbie Wood's second goal, and both of them have been magnificent kicks from the centre half forward position. Horsham certainly missing Graham Moyle, who's on the bench with that uh, split head. The umpire back in the centre of the ground. There's no doubt about it that Ararat have got the ball out of the centre on most occasions. Thompson and Hobbs. Hobbs gets the knock. But uh, McGinnis coming through there. He paddles it out in front of him. Good strong play. Gets around. Bananas it around here. Looking for his player up the ground. That's Williamson in front. He makes good position. And he's been a damaging player for Ararat. And he takes the mark in front of Dunn, he? Williamson, a very nippy little rover. He's quick. Over the top, says Toddy. Drive it along, which he does. Puts it down. Chris in there. Got the sets right for it. Can't take the grab. It's on the ground. David Bone. Dolkin again. Oh, beautiful handball. handball. Over the top. And here he is again. Put this one oh. down to number six. Kerr. Number 34, that's six off the half forward flank. And by goodness, I just can't believe that any player, you know, I suppose we're knocking players, but any guy that has a fellow on the half forward flank who's kicked five or six and done the damage that he's done just doesn't play him toe to toe. No, you can't afford to, but that was a magnificent handball by Chris Stock, and he'd hardly had his hands on the ball. It was a handball straight out to the running Greg Kerr. You're running with confidence at the moment, all right. Well, the crowd have come to life in the grandstand, and I can assure you that they're all our at people at this stage. 22-9, 13-13, five minutes into the final quarter at Anzac Park. Down goes the ball in the centre of the ground. Hobbs and Thompson again. Up they go, nullify each other, down to Pistol Wood. He pushes it out behind him, stacks on the mill, says the umpire. Give it to me, and we'll ball it up once again. Peter Hickmont there in the centre of the ground. Also is McGuinness, he's in there. Cole Thompson, the big fella. Hank Owen, he's been quiet since the first quarter. Down goes the ball, up they go. Thompson gets a knock, puts it down towards young um, Hosking. He pushes the ball out, but a Torsham player's battling in there. Very scrambly play out on that half forward line. Nothing in it, players unable to break away with the ball. The umpire's going to bounce it up once again, slightly closer to Horsham's half forward line. Down it goes. 
Hobson and Hobbs battling against each other once again. Hobbs gets the ball there and he puts it over to Peter Light. Can't control the ball. Kel Duncan has lost 27. He can't control. Cole Thompson gets up, puts the handball up to Dolkin. Puts it over the top of Phil Creek. Phil Creek down to Duncan. He's out from full back. He's caught too slow. Gets the handball across to Mapleson. Screws it around towards goal. Here's a lovely goal from Mapleson. That's the second one that he's kicked like that. Screwed around the corner. And that makes Horsham up to 14, 13, 91. Error at 22, 9, 141. And that's three goals to Mapleson. And he's been a try for the Horsham side all day. Three goals to Andrew Mapleson wearing the number 22 guernsey for Horsham. And here comes Valance take over from Cole Thompson who's put in a great performance in the ruck so far in this grand final. Balance back in the centre to do battle with Steve Holtz. Usually throughout the year Cole Thompson's played mostly in the forward pocket and Bruce Valance has done a lot of the ruck work but it's been the reverse today. Now we've got Valance on the ball against Stephen Hobbs. I wish he could do a little bit more with the ball but up they go. The big men fly and up. Hobbs got the big punch. He's going desperate punch in the effort this time. Pass spread top and in they go. Alistair Williams has too much pace. He handballs it over to who's his Young Darren Bale, is it? Here's Hank Owen there, he's got it. He looks for another player down the ground. And Toddy there, no, Johnny O'Callaghan's got the sit. And Johnny O'Callaghan too strong down there. He goes across the centre to Phil Creek. Phil Creek's held into by Stuart McGuinness. See, they slow the game right down now. It made it hard for Horse and Collins to get back in the game. Here's Kel duncan has got the sit. Oh, well, yes, I'd play that mark. It's strong man. It looks like he's got a live look at half the other. He drives it down to Peter Wallerman. Peter Lott, oh, who's going to mark that? No, it's plays on Tony Burrell, who's got his foot in the ball a bit late, a good tackle. And here's Peter Waller and handballs it out to Peter Lott. He's going to try for a goal from here. Oh, it's a chance, no. Who's that mark in defence? Pick that player up down there, Hugh. Looks like Craig Summers to me from this distance, with Stephen Smith standing on the mark. There's a loose man there, but he's gone inboard. It was a very dangerous. No, the other call back. back. Well, for the life of me, I cannot understand this decision. If it had been anywhere else on the ground, I would say play on. They do this in league football, they do it up here. The blade doesn't kick over his mark, it's just naturally play on, in my opinion. He goes for a big kick down the ground. Neil Valance is out, it's in our back door. Yeah, no, really Beaver no. Wallerman, no, it's play on. It is the umpire. Beaver Wallerman goes to his left foot and drives it straight through the middle for a second goal. And that's a 15th goal to Horsham. Horsham, 15 goals, 13, 103 to Ararat, 22-9, 141. They well, haven't given up, Horsham. You How long have you been in the fast food business, Huey? <laughs> <laughs> They're still battling there, and that interesting move of Duncan around that centre-half forward position for Horsham put a bit of life into there. Yes, he's given them line. something there across the half-forward line that I haven't had all day. I thought O'Kelly did all right there in the first quarter, but wasn't an effective half-forward where Duncan has been at this stage. OK, Ararat in command at the moment. They're heading for the 86 Premiership, and Hank Owen urging the side on there. Kerr. Around the centre line, Valance against Hobbs. Valance hesitates, goes in. Hobbs with a mighty bump towards centre half forward. His balling leads in the race for the ball. He picks it up, gets around a couple of players. A quick handball out towards Hickmott's in front. Hickmott falls over the top of the ball. And now at the centre's dive on top of it. Desperation by Spalding there. And Spalding holding up play there on the Horsham half forward line. And that are at players all day have thrown their body in. And they look set to go on and take this flag. Wallerman doing the ruck work here. Wallerman for Horsham against Valance from Ararat. Pushing the side, play on towards the umpire. Steve Wallerman grabs the ball off the ground. A quick hand pass out Phil Creek. to Phil Creek. Williamson. Williamson now gathers the ball. He's giving it in front of him. Runs the ball over the line, the umpire says. Throw it in. Horsham don't have the pace that the players like Williamson, Spalding and, and that have. Valance is in front with the ball. He taps it out to Cunningham. Cunningham back to Williamson. In front, Gary Todd. Fighting half of the ball, there's three or four, or will he do something with it? He looks down the ground, and here we've got Chris Christoph in front of Grant Kemp. Oh, brilliantly done, done it with ease. Goes under his left foot, drives it down, looking for big Cole Thompson, the, got the sit, well punched away by Mark Rose, who's been a good player for Horsham today. How about that for skills? Here he wasn't bad, was it? Oh, brilliant, I wish we had him at Essendon. I'm sure the only thing that kept this fellow out of playing regular league football was injury. My word. It's a shame to see a player with that much ability you know, brought back to the field with a crook knee. Deep in the air at attacking zone. Thompson battling for the ball. Kerr picks it up. He's tackled by Graves. Slung to the ground. Picked David up Hosking. by David Hosking. Jennings. Hosking hand pass over to Jennings. Jennings caught one in the mush. The umpire caught. calls play caught. on. He's caught with the ball. And now Yogi Kemp takes it away. A hand pass over the top to Peter Light. Right one bound. He's tackled. Oh, right. He's tackled by Bruce play on. In comes the horse and fly. A hand pass picked to Big Hobbs. Hobbs moves onto his left foot. Kicks the ball into the umpire. 
We've got Fallon's picking the ball up. Hobbs oh, again oh. covers possession. O'Callaghan, the hand pass to Hobbs. Hobbs been nearly Horsham's best player for mine. Hobbs again battling away. The ball runs free to Gary Todd. He takes his time and drives the ball to the four line. And here he is. Chris Dolphin takes an easy mark. And good play by Gary Todd. Gary Todd looking for a player, as Arad have done all day, looking for men in their forward line. He found Chris Dalkin, and Dalkin now from about 20 metres out, on a fairly acute angle, to line up and put Ararat even further ahead. One thing about it, uh, with the young Grant Kemp playing on Chris Dalkin, if you can't win the premiership, at least you'll learn a little bit about the game of football today. It's a good learning period for these young fellas coming up. It's a nice kick. No, he's just gone across the goals, and it's one point for Chris. <laughs> What do you mean you'd love to have Dalkin at Eston? Anyway, we've given you everything from Collingwood in the last few years. Yeah, well, at least we got further than Collingwood this year, did this year. Mark Ray's gone on a big torpedo punt. punt Centre of the kick. ground almost. Gary Todd's playing a great game and drives it in with his left foot. Rod Dummett's in front. And grabbed hold of by uh, Chris Dalkin. He's handballed it out to Mark Ray's. Big torpedo punt down the wing. And there's Peter Light got the set. Andrew Moperson comes in hard. Peter Light handballs it across to Yogi Kemp. Handballs it across to Stephen Hobbs. Hobbs has gone on his right foot. Oh, good mark. And who's that? Around the neck if it wasn't a mark anyway. It was well done by Beaver Wallman to slow down the Arad footballer there. But it's number 23 and Craig Summers who's played a very good game for Arad today. He's looked down the ground there for young Williamson, by the way. Williamson's gone up. Oh, no, it's a free kick against Williamson to Peter Light. Would have been a nice mark if he'd got his hands to it, but he went a little bit early, I think, about five minutes or so. OK, Peter Light driving the ball deep into attack for Horsham, looking down there for uh, Peter Hickmott. The ball's punched away by the Ararat players, grabbed up off the ground by Duncan. He gets a hand pass across to uh, the running player from Horsham, who lines it up. Uh, Stephen Smith was it, fellas, and uh, Mapleson was it. He's made some pretty good uh, uh, down that ground, and he's popped it through for a uh, goal to Horsham. Um, brings him along to 16-13, a little bit more respectable. Four goals to Mapleson. Hasn't been a bad player, but uh, hasn't done the sort of things around the ground that we're used to seeing him do. 16-13, 109, Ararat 22-10, 142. The Ararat players to me might be waiting for that final siren. It's a long way away. We've only been going 12 and a half minutes. 15 minutes away from a premiership. The umpire bounces the ball. Cole Thompson in there. Hobbs is getting right on top in the centre bounces. Down to McGuinness. He's uh, Summers, it is, in there, and he's hanging on Spalding. 23, not 33, 33, not 23. He's caught with the ball, and the umpire says uh, he had no chance of getting rid of it. We'll bounce the ball once again. Down it goes. Thompson in front. Hobbs working in hard against him there. Well picked up by Yogi Kemp. Down there to uh, Brett Goff. He's having a good cut at uh, Kel Duncan, but Duncan's just uh, number uh, 30, it is, there. And Stuart McGuinness in the back, and he takes the free kick. Drives the ball out wide, looking out here for the danger man, Kerr. Kerr's in there, he's battling. Merlo takes the ball, breaks away, kicks the ball quickly down to Hobbs, and Stephen Hobbs takes the mark in the centre of the ground. He'll play on, goes straight across the ground, hooks the ball around, all uh, are out there, but Horsham from behind. Greg Wicks over the top, well Robbie Wood, uh, Robbie Wood takes one bounce, drives it deep into the forward zone, down there towards Beaver Wallerman, touched on the way through by the Ararat player, and one point to uh, Horsham. Horsham not giving in, they're battling it right out to the end here, but they just don't have the manpower. Kicked out by Valentin, a fullback, and taken out there easily by uh, Cole Thompson, who's made ground in front of Stephen Smith. He'll settle things down, and he comes up here, looking for a man out on his own, finds him out there, and that's McGuinness. He's at the uh, true centre-half back position, Stuart McGuinness, and he takes the mark in front of Peter White. Arad slowing it down at every opportunity now. He's looking around for somebody to kick it to. Decides to come this side of the ground. Straight up the ground there. He's looking for Kerr. Kerr's in front. Valens at the back. He takes the mark. Play on. Put. Oh, oh good no. gracious. Play on for mine. He's turned and taken at least two steps towards goal. And the umpire's given him the, uh, the advantage and let him go back and take his kick. He puts it onto his left boot. Going down there, looking for uh, Dolphin. He gets to sit over the back of Bone. Bone paddles it out in front of himself. But very quickly on the fall of the ball there was Hosking. Hosking swings it around. Gets it out to Dolphin. Dolphin a hand pass over the top to Williamson. Is he going to be quick enough? Swings it around. And there's the nail in the coffin. Got us there, Williamson. Number 24 for our act. That's four that he's kicked. He's kicked one in the first quarter, two in the second, and he's kicked that goal in the last quarter. And if they ever needed one, that's really shown it up for the Rats. My word, that's it. And the Ararat looks pretty well set. It's going to be a hot time in the old town tonight, you, I think. Yeah, well, Ararat to me looked like they were just playing out time, and they really did need that game uh, goal to get them back on the running game. As we can hear the supporters really starting to cheer on at the back of us here. 
And umpire is about to bounce the ball again with Cole Thompson back on the ball again. Stephen Hodgson is trying his hard out for Horsham. He's tapped it across to Peter Light who handballs it across to Robbie Wood who drives it down to the forward line. And Neil Valance has played a great game at fullback for Ararat. He's taken another mark and drives it out to the flank to Michael Hoskins. He's been a bit quiet for the last quarter, but a very dangerous play whenever he gets the ball. He's hooked in with Stuart McGuinness. He's starting to play around with a little bit of arrow. Zigzagging up and down the ground, but the keeping possession of the ball. It's a big kick. Stephen Hobbs got the sit on. Oh, Jennings, just said thank you very much. He's he played a good game, hasn't he, oh, Jennings? great game, by Who are you going to pick for the best players? There's going to be a lot of players for Arat. Look at that for a out, giving him too much latitude by Grant Kemp. And he's, no, he's going to look like he's going to pass. He's gone for a big one. He fought around Grant Kemp and just said thank you very much. And he's given it in. And it's a point. Great bit of play by Chris Dalton there. Okay, waiting for the ball to be kicked back in now. Mark Graves looks like he's going to kick the ball back in. Ararat with a commanding lead at about the uh, 16 minute mark of the final turn. Straight down the ground with oh, a pumping it's a magnificent never kick. kick. Hobbs underneath it, Thompson there, pack of players fly. Take a light pack Pretty by Hickmott. Hickmott. Hickmott down towards the half forward line. Mapleson scouting the packs. He kicks a little bit smothered there running into the forward line I think it'll beat the players over the line out of bounds deep in Horsham's forward line and the score is 23 goals 11 149 to Horsham 16 14 110 as Grant Kemp Grant comes Kemp's off been the field. pulled off the ground again I don't know who they're going to put on Moyles back on the ground he might have been stitched up looks like there's going to be a throw in here in the forward pocket and up goes Cole Thompson against Beaver Wallerman Beaver Wallerman must be on the ball at this stage no it's gone out of bounds again not much point if he's fit enough to come back on uh, putting him the full back here I'd be putting him in the forward line they can't save it from here can they well, there's no hope of saving it they've just got to try and win it and they've got to put it, all their aces up in the forward line in, on the ball here's Robbie Wood turning on his left foot hooks into the centre Stuart McGinnis I think will take this mark no it's been play on right well by Yogi Kemp hooks it with his left foot and that's only one point yeah. Ararat with purpose in their play all day here, all they? day all day they've looked up and had a look to see what they can do with the ball. Look at this, Michael Hoskins sneaking out there in the forward pocket. I don't know where to kick it. Neil Valance has got about three or four options. He's gone for a big one down the ground, looking for David Jennings. Oh, great there he is play again. by Jennings. He's been a fantastic footballer today. And Robbie Wood doesn't let him play on. Yes, he does. And he drives it down to Gary Trotter, who taps it over the back. David Hoskins hasn't been on the ground long. David Bone in front, tapping it around. Trotter's in front of the ball. Taps it on to Bruce Valance. He's a natural left footer. Well done by Mark Graves. And David Bain hooks him with his left foot. Peter Lloyd's taking a good mark. Oh, he handballed it to the Yogi Kemp. Yeah. Over to Mark Rose has been a great try for Horsham. And he's got Dumasy again. People Wood has been in and out of the game. Tried and just not up to it at this stage. Down to Jason Merlot. Now he kicked it up in the air straight to Michael Spalding. You've got to watch him. He'll take off like a skyrocket. He's got a ton of pace. Fred Dalton's been very casual but very efficient today. Drives it with his left foot down to Bruce Collins. David Bain over the back. Rove by Mark Graves and drives it with a big torpedo punt down Greg Wicks. No, no, I would have paid that to Tony Burrell. A tremendous gutsy mark backing into the pack there. Burrell picks himself up off the turf. He'd be pretty pleased with Ararat's performance so far. Kicks the ball out towards Michael Hosking on that centre wing position. And Hosking drops what seemed to be a pretty early, easy mark out there in front of the, uh, the trainer's bench. The ball will be thrown in right on centre wing here at Anzac Park. The batter had a commanding lead at the moment in the 86 grand final. Thompson over the top, hits the ball there, picked up by Hobbs, who's put in all day. The umpire says, go back, fellas, to your kick. And that's Robbie Woods kick out there. Robbie Woods now goes forward towards the centre half forward position. Up they go. And it's a good mark there, the number 27 from Wilson. Kel Duncan. That's Kel Duncan. Duncan now moving the ball down towards full forward. Players there, punched away the there. Dewey Coon picks up the ball, can't get a handball away, picked up Wicks. by Greg Wicks, Wicks with a snap shot over his shoulder, and I think it's going across the place of goal, and through for one point. Horsham 16, 16, 112, to so our at 23, 11, 149. If you look at the scoreboard, that's 32 shots to 34, so there's not a lot of difference in the shots for goal, but as we said earlier in the game, Arrow seem to be able to do a lot more with position of the ball. Stewie McGuinness is let out here and taken a tremendous mark. Given too much latitude by Whitey then. He's looking for someone to kick it in. Greg Kerr's been warned by Jason Miller at this stage, but he's in front again. Yogi Kim comes through strong on his left foot. 
not an efficient, uh, very effective kick. And Neil Valance comes out, pushes in front of him, we're going for the boundary line, and it's out of bounds, right in front of the dressing sheets, about 40 or 50 yards around from the Horsham goal. OK, the umpire throws the ball in. Ararat about eight to nine minutes away from a premiership. In it goes Thompson laying all over the top of Wallerman. Ararat players defending desperately and then the ball's in the square and the Ararat player, Williamson, he's been a good quick player, runs it right across the ground. Beryl is out in front. There's Robbie Wood and also uh, the uh, number 11 winger Jennings who's been a great player in there and they push the ball uh, over the boundary line and out of bounds, half forward flank for Horsham. 20 minute mark of this final quarter, Ararat uh, ready to take this cup home. Number nine, Hickmott is in there uh, rucking and roving. Which takes the ball, he's collared and uh, the will pay the free kick and the free kick will go to Ararat. Have defeated Witchy Bruce Arapport, 16 11. Running down the ground, uh, Jennings wanting to run on with the ball there, but the umpire says back and kick behind your mark and uh, he'll come and kick this ball long down into the half forward line. Probably around about his 20th kick for the game. He gets a big wobbly punt kick down there and a good mark by Stephen Hobbs. Top He's certainly been a good I player for Horsham Hobbs. Away he goes, he runs across, does it himself, takes one bounce, sticks it onto the left boot, coming across here uh, looking for Peter Hickmont, puts it out in front of Hickmont. He's got two to one on him, brings the ball around, handballs back over the shoulder to Peter Light. He's tried hard for Horsham. Stewie Coombe in there, a little bit under one demand at this stage. Kel Duncan's in there battling, but McGuinness gets a handball over the top. Good play there. Uh, Kel Duncan backs himself up well. Beautiful hand pass across to Mapleton. Mapleton has a shot for goal. He's put it right down there, and that's going to be a goal. No, it's marked just inside by Ararat. They play on quickly. It's the Ararat player comes out here and he's found Darren Bale. He'll handball over the top. No, he won't. He'll steady it down. He's going to kick the ball long. Drive it long, play percentage at this stage. He comes out looking for the danger player Kerr. Two Horsham players fighting for it and a good mark to Stephen Hodge. Plays on quickly, gets it across to Coombe. Coombe drives it down, a fairly ordinary kick in towards Duncan who can't take the mark. The ball's back on the ground again. Peter Light has control. He can't do anything with it. Gets it across to Peter Wood, puts it into the 10 yard square, but it's all our at players down there and they relieve out of there once again. Viral it is. Hand passes across to Summers. He's been a good, strong player in that halfback line. And here's BOG for mine. Best on the ground. Jennings on that wing. Number 11. Away he goes, pops it on the left foot again, deep into attack for Ararat, but out in front of his man there is Rod Dumasny, and he takes a timely mark, deep in defence. OK, the ball now moves to the centre half, back position for the Horsham side, Mabelson takes the ball, and he kicks towards the half forward line, Hickmott under it, at the back there, goes over the back, Ararat, ooh, met heavily, solidly there, the umpire calls Kel Duncan's on. got it. Duncan with the ball in front of him. It's David Hosking going through hard. David Hosking dives on the ball. Pack of players in there, Very Cole Thompson included, and the umpire the says, "She's mine, fellas. I'm going to bounce." It looks like there's a bit of how uh, do you do out here at the moment? Some two players getting in there for a bit of a uh, sort you out, and uh, Stephen Hobbs amongst them. We're talking Peter this, hap this happened in the seconds of the last few minutes of the game. There's a bigger all in blue, but we were expecting it early in the game where there was a fair few nerves. But at this stage, I think it's only frustration. Not much in that one, fellas. No, not even worth talking about, Tony. You'd have more fights in your backyard with your kids than that one out there. <laughs> at this stage of the quarter, we've seen Horsham has kicked four goals. Four goals, four to Ararat, who have kicked two goals, two. So Horsham have come back into it this this stage, but the 23 minute mark, I don't think Ararat. Have, I mean, Horsham have got enough time. People, people would drives it down. It's a big kick, a big bomb into the four line. Great gutsy Greg mark Wicks. there by Greg Wicks. This could make it a little bit interesting here, uh, Peter. Oh, come well, I think on, you're you trying fellas. to make something of it, Huey. There, I'd, my money's in the bank. I think it's and Six home. goals, a difference. Wicksy coming in directly in front. He doesn't miss it, straight through the centre. But give Horsham their due, they haven't, uh, haven't given up their try, they're just a little bit undermanned all day. All day they've been a little bit undermanned. That's Greg Wicks' second goal, he kicked one in the third quarter and that's his second goal in this quarter. I mean second goal for the game this, this quarter. Have a look at the uh, Ararat forward line. You had to like to have Chris Dolgan at centre half forward and Toddy both uh, ready to go you know, in a grand final this stage. Well, you know, Chris Dolgan's only been in and out of the game but looked very da dangerous every time he's got it. But players like Kerr and Todd, Murray McGuinness and these players have always Jennings. looked at me. Jennings has been a tremendous player. Hank Owen when needed. He's been oh, yeah, Hank Owen's just played when he wanted to by the look of it today. I suppose he missed that second semi final through suspension. He's been very keen and he got him off to a great start here today. OK, the ball back in the centre. Ararat heading for the flag. Hobbs again against Valance. Hobbs wins the tap out. Peter Light grabs the ball. He's tried hard all day. Gets a short kick out there. Picked up by Kemp, I think that is. Players dive on it. The umpire says, I'll have it, fellas. And I'll bounce it. Centre half forward position for the horse. So. 
Bruce Fallence is about to go up here against Stephen Hobbs. He's gone for the big one again. He goes Robbie Wood going through. No, it's Michael Hoskins got it on his left foot, drove it down to Kerr again. He's on his own by 14 yards. And it goes down to David Hoskins. Drives it with a right foot, drove it down the ground. Mark Rays has been one of Horses' best players today. Going for a big torpedo punch. Got 60 metres into that one. Oh, great mark by Cal Duncan. The move of the day, I think, but it was made a little bit too late. He's given him a great drive there at centre forward this quarter. Well, I thought he played pretty well in the first half on Toddy too. He kept him uh, well down in that first quarter when there was a lot of pressure on the Horsham back line. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure, as you say. He was very, very close to Toddy. Didn't give him much. Can he kick a goal from here? It's a high kick going long down in the goal square. And it looks through. like it's through. Yes, it's a great goal to Cal Duncan. That's his first goal for the match. And that makes a score. What, Peter? We've got 18 goals, 16, 124 to Ararat. 23 goals, 11, 149. The Ararat side just a little bit slender, slowed down a little bit, haven't they, in the past couple of moments? They think the grand final's in the bag. I'd agree with them. I think Well, it's a 26-minute mark. We've only been playing one minute of time on. There won't be a lot of time on in this game. Number but 15. I we should be looking through for our best players. And my best players would be players like Neil Valance at fullback, done a great job. Craig Summers in the back line. But as the ball's bounced again, we have Stephen Hobbs, who's played his heart out this half. He's going through again, rode it. Handballs along to Kel Duncan, the man at the moment, going onto his left foot. Brushes through with his left foot. Oh, bagged don't it. tell me he's bagged it. He has. He's going to lift them up from the bottom of the floor, this bloke here. They moved the 19 goals, 16, 130. 19 points behind Ararat at this stage. 23-11, 149. I'd say four minutes to go at the most, Oh, yeah, yeah well, it went, went 33 minutes the last quarter. We've only been going 26 and a half, this one. No, uh, not as many goals this quarter, fellas. Won't be going to about 29 minutes. OK, the Horsham fellas doing themselves up for one final effort. Stephen Hobbs has been doing a tremendous job this half in the centre bounds. Can he do it again? He's... Cole Thompson still in the forward pocket again. Bruce Balance goes up with him this time though. And Hobbs goes up, big punch across the light. Light looks for handball, drives it with his left foot down. But the Arrowhead fellas are in front. Here's Cal Duncan again. Got brushed aside. Here's Greg Wicks going through. Desperation is Michael Hosking, is it? Oh, could have been a free kick. And here's Beaver Wallam. He'll turn. Oh, he doesn't know which way to go. He's turned on his left foot. Can he bag it from there? Oh, it's a dangerous one. It's it brilliant. Oh, it's another he goal. He's going the wrong 13 way. points, the difference, would you believe it? Unbelievable comeback by the Horsham side in this last quarter. It's only been the last 10 minutes, really, hasn't it? 13 points, the difference. And Ararat have gone to sleep. Toddy's coming down the ground. He looks pretty relaxed. He's not really worried, but he's coming down the ground now. And they, uh, they've let Horsham run right over them. And, uh, goodness, could a miracle happen? I don't, I don't think so. Chris Dolk has gone into the centre of the ground. He's trying to gear them up. That's Beaver Wallerman's fourth goal. He's kicked one in the first, one in the second, and he's kicked two in this quarter. He's kicked four for the match. The crowd's come to life here at Anzac Park, Warwick Nabil. Thompson's back on the ball. OK, uh, Thompson back on the ball. Thompson against Hobbs, who's been a great player in the second half for Horsham. Hobbs again, but it's stolen in the centre by Williamson. He's tackled by uh, Peter Wood, and uh, the umpire will bounce it up again. Time's certainly running out for Horsham, and it's amazing to imagine that uh, Horsham are this close to our rack. Thompson coming in from the side in front of Hobbs. Well done. He's put it over the back. Here comes Hank Owen, the danger man. He'll use his pace. He screws it around towards that forward line. Up towards you. Oh! Hosking, he goes across the centre half. Oh, it's a bad kick. Moyle over the top. Todd's in there. Uh, also, um, uh, Mark Graves is working very hard in there. A screamer of a mark by the young fellow, uh, Michael Hosking. He'll uh, get himself a video to have a look at that. Oh, one. that was a brilliant mark. His grandfather here would be finding him screaming for, with excitement there. But and up we've got Bruce Valance going again. He taps it across to Alistair Williamson, a good player. He all kicked it along the ground by Alistair. All our rats. Mark Cunningham here. Drives it down, looks for a player. Looks like Chris Dawkins got the set. Oh, great mark. Only does what he has to, this fella, doesn't he? Yeah, he knows. Look at this. He's holding up the Plenty game. Plenty of time. Pull the socks Plenty up. Plenty of time at the 28 and 3 quarter minute up. mark. Yes. Ball of Greg Kerr on his own again. Oh, goodness oh, gracious me. Believe it. Mark Graves was standing five yards away from him without an opponent. And at the last moment charged at him. It was too late. Can There's he kick number seven? out there in that forward pocket. Can... Can my, uh, Greg Kerr kick seven? I don't, I don't think, think he can. make the difference, will he? Make the distance, you mean, Michael? What did I say? The, difference? the difference? I meant the distance. It's been a long He's been the difference with. between winning and losing today, this bloke. He's been a tremendous, tremendous heavy. He's really concentrating. Head over the ball. Drives it long. It's going to be close. The crowd roar. More over the top there. Come back onto the ground after Rain's having on the his head bench, Phil up. Creek on. Stuart Coombe off. We've got Moyle driving it out from the goal square. Got to go straight down the centre. Oh, he's kicked in the man of the mark. And Michael Hoskins' aerial snaffle is. 
Oh, look at this. You watch. He'll drive it. Pew, straight through. She's all over now. No, he's no, hit the he's post. What's happened? Hit the post. Oh, it's a goal. No, I can't work it out. Hit the post. No, hit the, hit post. the post. They're all congratulating Michael Oskin. Shave the, the post. post. Well, I couldn't believe that. All the arrow players are still it was shaking, a goal. fellas. Oh, that's when the goal up by grabbed the flags. Oh, come on, you blokes. Well, that was a terrible mistake. Yeah, you fellas have got to live in Horsham, you know. Oh, yeah, but we've got to commentate as had we to, see it. Had though. to hit the post, though. Goodness, yeah, he's close to the Not arguing about Mark it. Mark Grace. Oh, well, what's he done? time on again. He's telling no, him what's that he's got to... I well, don't know. Kids over the boundary. The Ararat, the Ararat kids are halfway onto the ground. They're ready for this one. Mark Graves is going to kick the ball out the 30-minute okay. mark. I said it only go 29. Well past 30. What are you going to ask me, you blokes? <laughs> okay, Mark Graves, Graves he's going to kick the ball long, straight ready. down the middle. Beautiful kick again to the centre of the ground. Hobbs it is underneath there with Cole Thompson. And Hobbs takes a great mark. He runs on as he has to. Drives the ball deep into attack for Horsham. Two kicks and it's almost in the 10 yard square. One of them's up there. Well rowed by Duncan. Screws it back over his shoulder. In towards there. And it's a it's good defence by the Ararat side. And they've pushed it through. It'll be a point, And that'll keep them 15 points in front. Well, well I've, as I said, the best players I've got, I've got uh, Neil Valance, one of the Arrow players, Craig Summers, Alistair Williamson, Greg Kerr, my best player on the Dalkins day. Dalkins kicking it out. Uh, David Jennings, close to being best on the ground, and uh, Hank Owen. The umpires are uh, making sure that everybody's back over the fence. The Ararat crowd pretty keen to get on the uh, the ground at this stage, but um, Brett Dalkins, Dalkins kicks kicking it in. him, kicks short, oh, loose man out there again. for uh, 13, and that's Darren, Darren Bale. He's on his own. He goes long down towards the wing, putting the ball down there, and Tony it's an Ararat mark. Tony Bale. Uh, he's a barrel in there, Across number the nine. Jennings, over he goes. Your best player. Uh, oh, Jennings for mine, yeah. B.O.G. Hops. by oh, a street for mine. Uh, without any worries. Well, the best players I've got for Horsham are players like Johnny O'Callaghan, Peter Light, tried his heart out. Stephen Hobbs is a great player. Best players, Stephen Hobbs, I'd say, yeah. But Mark Graves done a good job. Beaver Wallerman, Andrew Mapleson. That's kicked by Graves then. Down the ground. Oh, it's a gutsy mate. This one, Pipplewood's got it. Can he get up and win this game, Horsham? I don't think they can. He's doing his left foot out to Stephen Wallerman. No, 20 or 30 th seconds Mark off siren Cunningham. time at the most. Mark Cunningham over to David Jennings again. Oh, beautiful kick across to Bruce Valance. Bruce Valance got the set. No, it's gone over. Do you bring your Japanese bounds. watch? We're up to 32 minutes again, Huey. Oh, look, Mick, you, you, there's been a lot of goals scored this quarter. No, there hasn't been a fair bit of time blown on to get the kids back over the fence. And here we have Hobbs again, best player for Horsham. Taps it over to Graves. Good work. Graves a good player. And it's a free kick to Mark Graves. There hasn't been a lot of free kicks paid today. The umpires have done a tremendous job. They've been inconspicuous the way they should be. OK, Graves it is. He kicks the ball down towards the centre of the ground. That big, long torpedo down almost towards centre-half forward. Kel Duncan's in front of the pack, but at a good mark to the Ararat player. And that uh, big Cole Thompson takes the grab, and he'll settle things down. Moves back slowly. Almost siren time. Almost siren time here. The big warden himself. He finds a man, does something with the ball all the time, and there's Williamson. He's been a very good player for our at. He's done lifted them when as needed, and he's been very, very quick and kicked uh, three or four damaging goals here today. He'll go across. No rush for the Ararat players. Goes across the ground looking for the young fella. Young Hoskin takes a good grab. He'll play on. Away he goes. He runs around. Screws the ball around. It's all Ararat. But Moyle punches it away. Good play by Moyle. O'Callaghan handballs out. He goes out to Yogi Kemp. He'll put the ball on the boot. Goes down across the centre of the ground. Duncan in front. He takes a good grab. No, it's play on the ball. Sit down to the front by Dalkin. Stacks on the mill, says the umpire. And this must be almost sorry. How long are you going, Anzac Park. Well, I said 30 seconds, 25 seconds ago, Pete. Uh, so it's probably only about five left. 33 and a half minutes, Huey. Honestly, away they go. The ball's on the ground. Hang going, going again. He's only done what he's had to. There it, is. there it is. Ararat of Premiers. The score, Ararat. A Horsham, 20 goals, 17, 137 to Ararat. 150 points. They've just taken that final score down off the uh, off the scoreboard there, Mike. Did you get the uh, the last goal number for Ararat, but they've certainly won the 1986 Premiership and a very deserved, terrific performance by the all the players putting in. And uh, my word, there'll be some terrific man. celebrations down in Ararat cup. this evening. Must have been a Horsham scorer on the scoreboard, Pete. She's uh, 20 seconds over and it's all gone. Well, what do you say, you fellas? Horsham, three years in a row, runners up. Yeah, that'd be that'd be sure would be disappointed, no doubt. But uh, I didn't think they quite had the uh, the talent that the Ararat side did. It's proved it on the ground. They came back. They didn't throw it in the Horsham side. But uh, congratulations to Ararat. They had good players all day over the ground.
Yeah, I agree with you there, Peter. I think that they just lacked the firepower up in the forward line for Horsham. They were a little bit undermanned as far as talent went compared to the outer outside. Well, it's been, been made, a comment made by the members of the 200 the Club. This is one of the, the best North sides in women's league final, football for the last 10 moment. years. And they play like it today. They laid down a couple of times here for a while. There's Horsham back into the game. Kel Duncan really tried his guts out in the second half to try and get Horsham in. But Stephen Hobbs did a tremendous job. He was Horsham's best player. Uh, Greg Kerr and uh, David Jennings were the best for our round. <laughs> Since Colin, a terrific grand final. No doubt to all the boys in there and plenty of celebrations yes, tonight. We're very, very pleased after today's win. We, uh, we win in the game with a fair, fair chance of winning and uh, come up that way, so it's really good. Well, all the boys put in Jennings, yourself. Rucked most of the day. Did you, did you know you have to go, do, go with that hard all day? Oh, I knew Hobbs. He was a, he's a great player, Stephen Hobbs, so I knew I had to do the yeah, most. But yeah, all the fellas put in today, and it was a great team effort. It, and Toddy, kicking that 100th goal, that must have just kept it off. Yeah, that's kept off a great year, yeah. Good on you, Cole. Thanks very much for talking to us. <laughs> With Chris Dalton. Chris, Chris. If I get a word, it must be a terrific feeling to come back to Ararat and take out the flag. Well, that's the only reason we came back here, my brother and myself. We knew they had a sniff and we thought if we came back, there's a bunch of kids and a few oldies and, uh, oh, geez, this doesn't come around very often. And what about tonight, Chris? Back to Ararat and certainly plenty of celebration. <laughs> I think there would be a good chance of that. What about Toddy, 100 goal? Did he get him, did he? He did. He's been deserved it. He's given it away after this. I might too. I've had enough. Get on you, Chris. Get, enjoy yourself tonight. Oh, Terrific well. game today. No sweat. All oh, right! All oh, right! That's the way! This is Right, well, you must be pretty pleased to take out the grand final. It's just it's so happy. Must put your work gone into it and now it's all paid off. Oh, it's just unreal. Unbelievable. And what about Toddy? No, magnificent. Man. Magnificent. All Everyone the boys just put in. Fantastic. Season and I know that you're proud of the boys that I had wonderful performance. I'm very, couldn't be more happy, Peter. Couldn't be happier. The tremendous bunch of players, and I'm just very, very happy for them and for the footy club. Dan, Hank, Owen, the Hosking boys, they really played well. And uh, you got your 100 goals. Terrific performance. 100 goals set, take second place to this, mate. Thanks very much. Take okay, it on your toddy. The captain coach of Ararat. Terrific performance, and they had plenty of celebrations at Ararat tonight. Peter White, uh, captain coach of Horsham. Peter, pretty disappointing again. The, the guys are obviously very disappointed. They came home very well in that last quarter, but it was too late, wasn't it? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that, Mike. You know, far too late. I think our rat were good early. They they were prepared to run the ball, and we didn't man up like we should have, and perhaps we didn't attack the ball aggressively enough. And uh, then as they started to tire, I thought that uh, we probably started to get our game going. But if we had have realised that do the disciplined things and perhaps been a bit more sure about the way we handled the ball and attacked the ball, we probably would have got back there a bit sooner, I'm sure. Peter, I think people have been a little bit critical of you perhaps because I think you've done an excellent job with the players that you've had there. You haven't had the, the Dolkins and the McGuinnesses in the side this year and you've lost some players and I think there's a fair bit of credit due to Horsham Football Club because there are a lot of knockers, aren't there? Oh yeah, I think everyone likes to see us get knocked off and, and that's fair enough. You know, I always feel if I go down and watch other teams where the top dog is... Uh, is, is been good for a while. Look, the, the fellas really are a, a tribute. There's no doubt about that. I, I don't believe that we had the strongest personnel in the league this year. I think we lack pace and I think we lack genuine skillful players, but they're certainly prepared to, to work hard on the track and I'm sure no team would train harder and whatnot. So it's a credit we, credit we got there, I guess, but it's, it's very disappointing to get so close and to play so well in the end. And, and to miss out again. Peter, I spoke to you briefly after last year's grand final and you were extremely disappointed. Never mind, keep that tune up. I'm sure that uh, you're very respected at uh, Horsham and throughout the Wimmera League and uh, we hope that we can see a lot more of Peter Light in Wimmera League in the near future. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, keep at it. Alexander Stenhouse, the West Premiership coach, they just noted a nice decanter. 
uh, worth $150, and I'm sure gives me great pleasure on the basis of the other things that you need to do. The presenters have been voting. You've been on the track for a long time. The taxi drivers uh, under Ken McLean in Melbourne have donated a trophy for the best player and it goes to Michael Hosking for our <laughs> Sponsors of the league, Scar Steel Supplies, have put in six thousand uh, dollars this year, and two thousand dollars goes today in trophies to the winning and losing side. I call on um, Mr. Ian Windybank to come forward, and Mr. Noel Johns, the president of the Horsham Football Club, so that the presentation for seven hundred dollars can be made by Mr. Windybank of Scar Steel. Well, it gives me great pleasure to uh, give you the one right from the chair, $700 for all your football players. Congratulations. It's going to be good to be in the final.
Please decide for the captain and coach. We've also seen Gary Todd kick 100 goals today.